Hello everyone and welcome back to another movie commentary. Today we're doing the Beauty and the Beast remake. Yes. Yay. Yay. <laughs> okay. It's reaction. an okay movie. Okay, it, it okay. exists. Okay, okay, okay. Let me explain. If I were to rank these uh, live action remakes in some way, shape, or form, I would con I consider Beauty and the Beast 2017 to be the Steven Universe season free of live action Disney movies. It's still good overall. However, this was where admittedly some problems did start to arise, although at this point, they weren't really that bad, except for some certain ones. But all the same, it wasn't enough to get people to say, oh, nah, down with the Disney live action remakes. No, this was still overall a well-liked enough remake here and there. It did improve mm -hmm. some things from the original. Oh, I still consider it weaker than the original, but overall yeah. it's a good time still. Uh, yeah, when, I, when, it comes to, when it comes to getting bar fair evaluations, I recommend Diva from the channel Musical Hell. Like she's really good at being fair when it comes to judging these things, and she said basically the same thing about this movie as well. I don't agree with her with the Lion King remake, but that's about it. Oh, she liked that. No, it's not so much that she liked it; it's mostly that she doesn't hate. She said, "Eh, it was okay. I don't, I don't, I don't care for it much, but at the same time, I don't hate it with with, with all my passion." Like most people do. That's basically what she said. I can but, sort of yeah, see sure. where she's coming from, but that's another... That is for another time, and don't worry, Lion mm -hmm. King 2019 will get its time on this show. But for so now... this is Beauty and the Beast 2017. So 2017 was the year where, well, live-action remakes were still considered eh at worst and pretty good at best. There was a lot of great good reception from the Jungle Book remake, which had come the previous year. Next year would come Christopher Robin... I still don't remember how the I'm reception sure to that a, one was. I don't think that's a remake. It's not really so much a remake. It's that a one sequel. Was more ah. like, it's, it's more like Hook. Here's the thing, yeah. though, Dwibs. Disney, Disney apparently counted it as one of their live-action remakes, so make of that what you will. Sure. It's sort of... It's actually decent, to be fair. It's that's sort of like how yeah. Disney didn't consider live-action Lion King, you know, an animated movie until... Oh, Oh, it's the highest grossing animated film? Never mm -hmm. mind! It's an animated film. <laughs> yeah, Christopher Robin is derivative, but it does it fine enough, if you ask me. I think it's, mm -hmm. I think it's better than Hook. So, Shiroi, why mm -hmm. don't you tell the audience about where it's to start? More, also, more, I disagree. I prefer Hook better. It's more consistent than Hook, I will give you that. But I think Hook has better highs. More highs. Sorry. Yeah. So, Shiroi, why don't you tell the audience where to start? Well, as usual, it's the uh, custom Disney logo for this movie. All right, then. Oh, yeah, this is one of those fancy movies. Well, actually, uh, most, yeah. of these remakes, most of these remakes actually have custom logos, so... Yeah. All mm. right, let's get going, then. But anyway, um, three, two, one, click. I remember the I actually hype saw for this movie. Theaters. Me too, yeah. This is actually the last of the, of the live-action remakes that I saw in theaters. Not the last for me, because that would be Lion King. I think this uh, is the last one I, don't I saw in I've theaters. I don't no, think no, I've that's seen a lie, Aladdin. It was Aladdin. I don't think I've seen any of these films. I will, since. I will give you that. I will say that, Jova. I will give you that, Jova. I actually regret not watching Lion King uh, remake on theaters. You know why? It would have been glorious to see a bark push <laughs> a giant ball of shit on the big screen okay. of IMAX 3D. Now that would have been about to say, I, 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 It's a scene from the movie. It's a scene from the movie. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, just, descri I'm, just, I'm just describing it. <laughs> okay. 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 Now, as much as I hate to, I'm afraid I do have to open with something that is a bit of a downgrade from the original. But you'll notice sooner or later here and there. It sort of technically came up, but... Uh, I'll explain later. This is uh, Dan Stevens playing the prince, if I remember correctly. Um, so yeah, um, so the main reason why I didn't watch this film in cinemas, okay, there's two main ones. I've already explained it to the guys off commentary, but I'll repeat it for the sake of the audience. Mm -hmm. um, I was still a bit upset from the um, Jungle Book remake. And also, I was, um, I'd only just finished watching, um, I was, I did watch Kong Skull Island. I was more excited for the Power Rangers movie than this one the following week. And, uh, well, I think, I think, I think Logan was nearly out at this point. I, or, or, was or Logan 2017? Wasn't that yeah, 2018? Logan, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, Logan came out earlier that month. 
actually. So. Oh, okay. Also, right. yeah. Put this, put this way, March had more exciting movies for me to watch. Than All right. Uh, one oh. thing I will give it right, right from the beginning. Uh, Bill Condon, the director, um, despite him, you know, being stuck with a terrible uh, material with the Twilight Breaking Dawn duology, now that he has a, a movie that actually allows him to show off his directorial skills a bit more, he gets to do some really cool visuals. Okay, I have seen um, I have seen Mr. Holmes from uh, Bill Condon. That was pretty good. It's basically oh, wait, elderly oh. Sherlock Holmes. Okay, so now here's one of the downgrades here. As Bob Show pointed out here, okay, the woman literally took a rose from his own garden and is offering it to him so that he'll let her yeah. in. That's like... That's like a burglar taking your money and then giving it back to you so to see if you'll give him a place to stay here. Like again, that's not so, <laughs> that's not so much the prince being selfish or whatnot. That's kind of common sense, though. That being said, does he even know that the rose is from his garden? Yeah, he has. A, he apparently has a way of telling, as we see later in the movie. Cause okay, okay, yeah, all right, yeah. Maybe yeah. he's for, the for... only one who can have the luxury of fresh roses reminder, or something. I don't fresh, know. Remi fresh reminder for anybody that doesn't remember: in the original, the rose was just a magical rose. She just cut it out of magic. It wasn't a rose from the prince's garden. Oh, oh, Luke Evans, he was in Fast and Furious. Well, the, yes. the most recent ones. Yes, I I even pointed that out as well. So yeah, I'll just say this though, um, the sorceress or whatever it is, she's a dick in this version. Like, no two ways about it, and it's not just to the prince who she's a dick here and there, but you'll come to see. But yeah, I actually understand. really like this scene though, like that it explains Oh yeah, it is what good. actually happened. And yeah, it's, it's more so that, that it's more so that Rose detail that Joe just pointed out she really, really hampers what's supposed to be the, the 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 moral of the story in a lot of ways because the the like the 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 fairy supposedly would be the one in the completely in the right and the prince completely in the wrong but now this just you know yeah. kind of screws up this I mean th it, there's times and places for moral ambiguity and this is not one of them yeah I know because again think about it she has cursed a man to be a beast he needs to actually be that monstrous to warrant her turning him into a beast. If she's exactly. doing this for him, assuming the worst of her, when again, she took a rose from his own garden here and there, again, that would be like someone who appears as a burglar trying to give you back your own money and demanding praise for it. <laughs> but alas, okay. um, one thing I do like about this movie is the set design. Like they actually do do a good yeah. job replicating stuff from the original movie and putting it into a live action setting here and there. Oh, uh, wow! You know, you know, I heard um, I heard the singing was a bit of an issue, but I didn't think that would be the very first thing ever Watson does in the movie. It sounds yeah, like Emma, literally honey. her voice is a keyboard. Emma, honey, I love you, but uh, please don't sing ever again. I could probably sing for Belle better than she does. All right, uh, here's the thing about watching this in the cinema, Dwibs. Um, with the speakers, you can hear the autotune clear as day, and it's the most grating thing in the world. Well, I mean, not... um, I mean, through my TV speakers. Okay, bear in mind I have to turn it down so the audio doesn't bleed through into the commentary. Even I can still pick it up. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Imagine okay. that with speakers in a cinema, though. It was yeah. just, oh, I me saw and this... Alice were just kind of looking at each other like, oh my god. I'll just say this, I'll just this say this. Me, me and my family, who are all <laughs> musically trained and inclined, we saw this movie in theaters. Imagine our horror at hearing Oma Watson's oh, voice like that. Gosh. You know what I saw? Doesn't help, Trips? The fact that literally everybody else is a great singer. She's the one out. She's the one out. out. And I'm guessing, <laughs> and, and, and there's a huge problem when it's um, the main when lead. It's the main lead. Let me put it like I this. Mean, it's the. I mean, I, I, so gone. It's the inverse problem of Dorothy in the Wiz movie here. Oh, like uh, Diana Ross is a great singer, and thank goodness for it, but she just was not the right fit for the role here. Here, Emma Watson could be a good fit for Belle, and her acting is great. But her singing, oh god, her they singing. They should have dumped her. They, this they is the really big problem should. with Emma. This is the problem with Emma. Okay, I, I understand. Of course, you can't get Paige O'Hara to do it. For those who don't know, Paige O'Hara was the one who voiced Belle in the original film. Obviously, they can get Paige O'Hara to do it because uh, 
she's a bit not only I don't I don't think she, I don't know if she's like incredibly experienced when it comes when it comes to doing a movie like this. Oh, oh even, on. even if she is, guy, even if she, uh... let me just finish though. Even if she is, uh, uh, I think she's a she's she's too old at this point to uh, play Bell. Actually, that guy, so, um... that guy in the stable earlier, I actually recognize him. He was in the he was in the most recent uh, Red Dwarf. Uh, uh, project as the as the main bad guy. Also, Paige, yes, didn't they bring her back as Belle and like you know Wreck It Ralph? Ralph freaks the internet still. Well, yeah, as a voice, Jova. But this would be a live action movie, which she would actually have to show herself physically. Well, here's an idea. Herself. Why not? Why not use her to dub over Emma Watson singing wise at least? <laughs> I guess their voices don't match. Because remember, no, I, remember, I, Jova. Yeah, even when you're doing really the... match, no. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, that's the thing, Jova. Even when you're doing a singing voice to dub them over, you still have to at least sound like it's the same, it's coming from the same person. I mean, yeah, from what I've heard of Paige O'Hara in Rap City Street Kids, she can do different enough voices that she could sound similar enough to Emma Watson. Mm -hmm. But, uh, okay, I, here's maybe, what... Maybe, I, I don't know. Also, also, remember, Paige O'Hara was also in Enchanted, and she looked fine enough in that. Who knows? If she hasn't aged too much since that movie, maybe she could do it. But okay, no. okay, okay. I'm not going to argue that they should have gotten Paige O'Hara back, because, you know, then we'd fall down the rabbit hole. Of... Hi, Josh. How old is Belle supposed to be? Uh, 20. All right. Yeah. Anyway, Josh Cat here plays LeFou. Uh, well, that's actually a really good casting choice. I mean, the Josh Cat is great, and yeah, I can definitely see him as LeFou, and he does, and he's really good here. So, should I mention it's, the it's, character it's, change? It's, it's, it's the guy that is the guy playing Gaston uh, that I'm not hang, entirely sure on. Hang on a minute. On. Hang on. Your French, you don't know what he's, what that guy said means. Uh, I think he was in the Harry Potter movie, actually. Mm -hmm. Luke Evans was in uh, Fast and Furious. Yeah, apparently, we have a French guy who doesn't know his own language. It's like, Weird. okay. I, I get it. I get it. Obviously, if obviously getting an actor that has the physique that the character had in the cartoon would be a bit hard to do. I get that. But I don't know. When I look at oh. that guy, I don't, see, I don't see Gaston. I just see... I don't even know what the hell I see. Oh. I don't see Gaston. By the way, it's going to become clearly obvious to you, but uh, LeFou is gay for Gaston in this version. Now, eh, pe whatever, pe people are kind of split on this for some reason. Me, personally, I'm fine with it, but I can see some people raising the bit here like, well, where, oh, a guy just can't show appreciation for another guy without being referred to as gay. Like, me, personally, I'm neutral to it. Like, it's fine and all. However, one thing Bob Show did point out is the fact that, you know, for a story that's supposed to be set in olden days, people are very accepting of, well, people of color, people who are gay, and all that. Like, yeah, fairy tales, sure, but fairy tales did still take place during Remit. ye old days. That that's the problem, Joe. You know, Disney. Uh, this is this is why people constantly refer to the term "walk Disney." The, the fact that Disney is doesn't have the balls to portray racial relationships in older times accurately and honestly because they're afraid they'll get backlash. You know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like inclusion, but I want inclusion that does make sense here. Again, this... exactly as Whoopi Goldberg put it very well. Uh, those times should not be ignored because that's an insult to the people who live in those times. Speaking of Whoopi Goldberg, literally my favorite version of Sin of Sleep Cinderella is a colorblind version. But here's the thing: that version is colorblind, so it makes sense that there are people of all different colors here and there whatnot you know it, it, it's fine in that regard here and there like they're pretty much upfront with yes we know that we have people of different colors but we're literally doing it just because it's pretty much like you know a broadway show brought to life here so of course there would be people of all different races and whatnot here and there this movie does not have sorry. as much that excuse though back to lafu though Personally, uh, I always. I oh, wait, always hold on. I gotta as... stop you right now. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. one of the one definite of the improvements in this Kevin Klein, <laughs> the Pirate King from Pirates of Penzance, plays Maurice here. And yeah, Maurice is one of the things a lot of people agree is pretty much a downright improvement here. He's not the mm -hmm. comic yeah. relief anymore, but he has quite a bit more depth to his character here. And the songs they add on for him help out too. A, mo a moment. In forever, I forgot the name. A moment in it's whatever. Just, uh, 
is this a better is this a better effects heavy movie starring Kevin Klein than Wild Wild West? Yes. Basically, basically in the original film, we never mom's sorry Belle's mom is not even mentioned. Like it's, it's it, as far as the movie is concerned, she never even had a mom. But uh, in this movie, we'll actually properly address uh, what happened to Belle's parents in, in the past. Both of them. Okay. Now you're as properly of, a Disney protagonist, Bell. Your mother died. As of the well, time of this recording, yeah. <laughs> as of the time of this recording, my favorite of these remakes is still Cinderella 2015. I oh. prefer Peach Dragon personally. I think that's like the it, it, that's it's exactly what Disney should do: take their bad, their, take their worst films and make better versions of them. I think of, you know, I haven't uh, I haven't seen the original Peach Dragon. My favorite mm -hmm. is either Cinderella 1997, 102 Dalmatians, or Jungle Book 2016. So also, Gaslund's of... actor wasn't in Harry Potter, but he was in Fast and Furious 6. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, Pedro... Say what, though, guys? A commentary of the last film Joe mentioned, that's gonna be fun. So, Pedro, you were about to say something before I mentioned the whole Kevin Klein thing? Uh, yes, LeFou. Uh, when it comes to LeFou... And the whole gay thing, I didn't really take it. I, I, the way I took it personally, at least, was that this is a guy who's, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, constantly keeps hoping for this guy to notice him, and but then he realizes that no, screw that, I need to value myself first. So he just decides to just move on, whatever. Like eventually, I'll find someone who actually, who, who, who that is actually deserving of me. You know, I, that's, that's, you, that's, um... that's how I took it personally. I mean, I, I, I thought it was fine. I, uh, what do you that think about it, Shiri? Doing. I like that p character progression too. I guess my only issue is that when he finally does ditch Gaston, it's a very immediate point. You'll know what I mean though when we get to that, because that's way later down the line here. So, yeah. So yeah, as opposed to being an inventor, uh, Maurice is more like a toy maker, model designer of sorts. Yeah, he basically tinker. He makes things. He's a, a, a know-it-all smart guy basically uh, also kudos to this movie it actually does take some more inspiration from the book here like in the yeah. book bell asks him to bring back a rose which at this point will explain why he goes after a rose that's you know yeah. kind of the out brother, there yes in the original brothers grim story bell actually had sisters and uh, the, the other sisters were vain and selfish and all shit, ask for really expensive gifts, whereas Belle, being the, the pure and innocent one, just said, oh, just give me a nice little rose. Um, however, just like with the original animated film, yes, uh, we, we've thrown away her sisters in this version too. My guess is like, well, uh, a lot of versions of Beauty and the Beast tend to get rid of the sisters because I guess they think it would kind of just turn it into pseudo-Cinderella. Not just uh, that, Joe, but the, 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 the sisters in, in in Beauty and the Beast have always been just there. They don't even do anything with them. In, like, neither in the book, nor in, in any adaptations that have kept the sisters. They're just there be, to be there, I guess. Go it ahead, depends then. on some of the adaptations. Sometimes the sisters also come to the castle and the Beast chooses among them and all that, but... Uh, yeah. yeah, go on, Dibs. Uh, recent, recently, um, uh, it was announced that, um, that uh, ABC, who, who are owned by Disney, Obviously, mm -hmm. are working on a um, prequel to this film to called the little oh, town that's going to be on that's Disney a... Plus. What is this? Women reading? This is the most unorthodox. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I mean, this was an issue at one point. Well, 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 okay, to... okay. So, so let me get this straight, Disney. You're afraid of portraying the racism that was going on at the time, but you're not afraid to portray the misogynism? But don't you see, Pedro, <laughs> Disney is all about showing them strong female characters. But here's the thing here. And so... that would be fine, but be consistent about it. Yeah. Um, any, any, anyway, yeah. apparently it's going to be a prequel starring Gaston and LeFou. With oh. Josh Gad and uh, Luke Evans Let me guess. coming back, and with I'm with mean, Gad co-creating uh, and writing the uh, movie along with the creators of Once Upon a Time. Oh, oh I like actually, Once Upon a Time. That, that's actually an interesting uh, uh, project. I'll I'll keep an eye on that. Okay, now going back to what Pedro said about Gaston, or you know the guy playing him. Here's kind of the thing about Gaston in this movie here. The movie does try to portray Gaston both simultaneously better, but also worse than the original version. 
How is that? Well, at some points, Gaston apparently really loves Belle that much to the point where he's actually willing to side with her on certain issues and not be as misogynistic against her as the town so are being. Whereas at other points then, I won't spoil how, he's kind of even more of a monster than the original Gaston here. It, it, it's weird, like, yeah, maybe it's just him being facetious, but he goes really way into it, like... And maybe like maybe it's one of those cases where they were trying to genuinely make it because he was always a dick in the original film. And here they're trying to make it so that at the beginning, yeah, he's not exactly the nicest person, but at the same time, he's um, like he's not quite as much of a dick as he was in the original. And then when over the course of the movie, he reveals his true colors. Like so, they're trying to do something where it's like he literally goes from one extreme to the other over the course of the mm -hmm. movie for the sake, you know, gradual way. I'm guessing that's what they're trying to do. I was saying originally you could immediately tell that he was going to turn out to be the villain regardless, you know. The most uh, the most recently I've seen anything from the original movie is when I saw this YouTube poop based off the um of the 90s film where um they turned uh, they turned her father into a uh, into a guy who raves in the pub and is obsessed with um Oh, that oh bonus, guys, and, uh, look at this. She literally ran oh, yeah. to a hill to sing her song. Uh, and the beast is, the most beautiful and the beast just the dropped and just... at the end. Okay, Pedro, you want to talk about how this moment is sadly not as well done in this movie? No. Well, I mean, well, it is a bit all... weird that she just randomly run off and somewhere and start well, singing. A... Well, that's the thing, though. The, 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 thing, the, the problem is that, again, once again, Emma cannot carry this, yeah. like we said. And uh, and it's just like another issue is that again this is also another problem. I mean, Bill is doing the best he can to you know do the scene his own in his own way. The problem is that the kind of angles that the original movie used are are used uh, you know take for advantage of the fact that it's animated and therefore they can just do whatever angles they they do. Whereas of course in live action you're a bit more lim you're limited to the constraints of reality, you know. So not only that, it really is one of those damn things. physics. It's a common problem. This is the problem. This is where this kind of problem with taking live animated films and centering in live action would reach its apex in the Lion King one, where you know style, stylized visuals of that movie were completely absent, and as a result, the live the, the musical numbers look so completely flat and lifeless. You know. I'm Okay, and also a bit of a point of contention, but some of the lyrics, provincial life, but you don't live on a farm in this version. Why? Um, well, 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 Jova, um, this is a movie where the French don't understand their own language. What makes you think the English will understand theirs better? That is... I will say, however, that um, the music uh, is pretty much exactly on point. Uh, Alan Menken came back to write the new score. Uh, well, but it's mostly just his original score, but with some changes here and there that, uh, to accommodate for the fact that this movie is longer. Um, and the new songs were written by both him and Tim Rice. For those who don't know who Tim Rice is, he was um, Alan Menken's partner in, in when it comes to making the songs for Lion King, together with Elton John. Didn't, didn't, didn't Tim Rice? Didn't Tim, Tim Rice and, work with uh, Elton John in the Lion well. King? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, Al Ashman died during the production of, of Aladdin, so Tim Rice came in to help Alan Menken finish it, finish the soundtrack, and Tim Rice kept that kept went straight from that to working in Lion King as well basically <sighs> and in, there it goes the wolves already damn hey I like how in this version the horse actually does come back for him and doesn't just leave him to die okay I'll be I'll be honest um, I don't think I've really seen or even heard that much about Kevin Klein and his work what's his most famous role from what I understand, the Pirate King, for which he was in the Broadway show and the movie based off of the Broadway show. I I haven't seen that one. The only thing I know him most of is Wild Wild West, where he played two characters. Trust me, Dwibs. You uh, do don't judge his career based off of Wild Wild West. That would be like basing Will Smith's well, no, not, career. I'll say of... that. Just saying, it's the only film I remember seeing of it. So, okay, I'll give the movie this also. The reason for Marie showing up at this castle is a lot better here than in the movie where he... Yeah, it, okay, as you remember, in the animated movie, he could go down the long way, but instead chooses to go down the obviously evil path here and there, which... 
Yeah, it's done for it's done for the purpose of a joke. Um, but yeah, it does it, it does paint Maurice in a very uh, uh, you know bad light. Whereas in, character, in terms of character judgments. Whereas in this movie, he's much more a victim of circumstance here and there. Like literally, yeah. lightning strikes down a branch, like which forces book. him to go here and there. Yeah, like he was in the book. That's this is what actually what happened in the book as well. So the so, original Brothers Grimm story specifically. Yeah, that's the thing. Honestly, this is one of the, one of the reasons I still do like this remake is that it's one of the remakes that does what you know the remakes maybe could try to do, trying to be more faithful to the original stories while still you know keeping to them what we do like from the Disney versions here and there. All right. So the um so the screenplay for this film is written by two guys. Um. Stephen Chbosky, who uh, previously wrote, um, oh, um, such obviously fitting, um, such an obviously fitting resume for this movie. He wrote Austin Powers and Goldmember. Oh, oh nice! I like, I like that movies. one. That's my so, favorite Perks Austin Powers being movie. Being a wallflower, mm. and um, and well, again, okay, those are the only films of his of note that he's um, written. And Evan Spiliotopoulos, who um, who wrote um, who wrote films such as Jungle Book Two, mm. um, Pooh's Heffalump movie, huh. the um, Hercule the 2014 Hercules movie starring Dwayne Johnson. Okay, that one was good. The Huntsman Winter's War. Oh. <laughs> and after this film, he wrote uh, the tw he co-wrote the 2019. Charlie's Angels. Oh, oh. wow. Beautiful. That is one mixed up resume. And I haven't heard anything video... about that movie. I just know people don't like it. And in terms yeah, of direct it's... video stuff that um, he was fully credited for, as opposed to just writing additional stuff, he yeah, co-wrote a... uh, the, co the Three Musketeers, Mickey, Donald, and Goofy movie, Pooh's Heffalump Halloween movie, Cinderella Free. And uh, Little Mermaid, uh, half, hmm. free, I don't know, Ariel's beginning. Uh, it, 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 don't worry, well, it's simple, sure. it, it's yet another one of those movies uh, on that trend of the, you know, a group of a, a group of women fighting all these misogynistic men that want to harm them and stuff like that. It's, it's yet another one of those. And I don't remember what the original lot. movie was about. Well, no, no, that's the thing, sure. Charlie's Angels... At the beginning, was actually a TV show back in the seventies. It wasn't a movie. Um, it had several movies, though. It right? had movies the later. Made yes. two movies. Well, and the and the, uh, yeah. Um, but let me put it this way: you're right. Um, the original Charlie's Angels show was basically kind of like the Pop Off Girls, you know, because I've always taken Pop Off Girls as kind of Charlie's Angels for kids, you know. Hmm. It's kind of like in the same vibe, where you know, like uh, think of the mayor as Bosley, and the girls are basically well, the angels, basically. Yeah. Sure. Smart. Yeah. Ah, but wait. Not uh not so smart right here though. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, 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 okay. So many roses. He wouldn't miss one. Okay, rose. okay, 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 okay. Here's another thing I'll give credit here. Unlike in the animated version where Maurice clearly went for a rose that was in a glass case that, you know, the person who owns the place probably wouldn't want taken, here it's literally just one random white rose, so... Yeah, I can understand why he it's might so think much. he wouldn't miss this one. It yeah, is not so much that he was taking a rose that he'd miss, it's just that you're clearly too close to this person, you might want to find one somewhere else. Not just yeah, that, uh, Joe, hey, Joe, maybe this is what they were going for, you know, in the same way that the witch, or the fairy, sorry, stole a rose from his bush, now Maurice steals another rose from his bush, maybe that's what they were going for, there's a connection between these two moments somehow. <laughs> Welcome to the live-action spirit film, folks. I don't maybe. know if that, I, I kind of doubt that's what they were going for, seeing as how, okay, with the, okay, with the sorceress, it was literally her offering him his own rose here. With Maurice, it was him t trying to take it to his daughter. Now, okay, the the problem is that there's a difference here. All right, so I have to put this out. Did you notice that there's nobody in the village right now? Oh yeah, that's that's it. The, village, the, village was the, the, the village. The village was completely deserted. It's right in the middle of the freaking day. 
It was like, bustling like the just earlier. Like, uh, did, did Bill Cullen forget to throw all the extras to come in for that scene? And it's clearly not like super early in the morning. It's probably like late morning or midday or uh, no, something. The, like, no, I don't. No, no, Pedro, don't you see? It's like it's like the Avengers nineteen ninety eight. They evacuated the place. So, so here's one thing that is mentioned in this movie, if I recall correctly. It's like, well. As uh, there's sort of an enchanted barrier around the castle, one that has made people forget about the Beast and company here and there, which is kind of weird when you think about it. Like, for one thing, okay, so wouldn't that mean that anyone who comes in that barrier would forget about them technically? Or, like, you know, wouldn't there be something literally keeping the castle from being entered or whatnot? It, it's a bit weird. Although that's a million... wouldn't it make more sense? Huh? Wouldn't it make more sense to just have the fairy make everybody forget about everybody from this castle, and that's it? There you go. That works. Yeah, I mean, Why and... even have come up with that barrier plot device, even. And hell, we uh... even find out later that she did make them forget about it. So why not just keep it with that? But no, there's a scene I can't where I... after Wonder Woman 1984 and now this, I, I can't believe I have to apparently explain this. To... But writers out there, if you have magic as one of your options in your screenplay. Use it. You don't need to come up with convoluted explanations for why something would happen. Yeah. Just, use magic, just use magic that your magical fantasy world already has. <laughs> like, seriously. The one time you don't need to exercise restraint, and you do for some reason. Like, <laughs> And you do it in a way that ironically makes it more complicated. How do you know the castle is alive? You just know that, oh, well, I guess technically there are things in it that well, are means, alive? Yeah, yeah. He, he means because things are alive in it, you know, like uh, the, the clock, the, the chandelier, all that stuff, you know. And he'd know by this point, most likely, so. He doesn't mean it literally. Well, so was the sorceress, or fairy, or whatever she is. Sarcasm. <laughs> okay, I do like them actually pointing out the... Oh, okay, so the Beast does bring up a point here. Hey, I got pretty much eternally damned because I didn't accept one of my own roses that was stolen from me, so... Yeah, why <laughs> should I have to suffer alone? I mean, that's the thing. He's technically kind of right here. Like, I mean... Again, what the sorceress did to him was also kind of, you know, disproportionate retribution when you get down to it. Uh. The design of the malls, of the, of the, of the beast in particular is also more faithful to the original il illustrations, actually. Yeah, I actually do like it. It is a nice enough mix between intimidating but humanoid. Also, yeah, um, the guy playing the beast here, he's a, he, he's definitely a good fit for the role. Mm-hmm. Ben Stevens, and he can actually sing, unlike, uh, his co-lead. Yeah. <laughs> Again, folks, I'm sorry, but you do not get a lead who cannot sing for crying in the bucket. That's like what happened with the Portuguese version of Princess and the Frog from what Pedro showed me. Yes, yes, don't even get me started on that. Hey guys, should we get a voice actress? No, no, no. Let's get a model who has never acted before. That's uh, a bad idea. Uh, I are think. You, are you referring to? I think it says the, something the, that the, I. The Portuguese dub of Port uh, Princess and the Frog. Let's just say that dub uh, was terrible, and that's awesome. I okay, think okay, it okay, says no, something no, 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 that I. Terrible, maybe terrible is a bit too strong a word, but it wasn't very good. Go let ahead, me put it like so. this: It's essentially something that has its main lead actress not be able to sing here. It's of something that I, someone who does not speak Portuguese, could still tell that the singing was awful. Basically, audience, go to YouTube and search for um, 
uh, when we're human, EU Portuguese, as in European Portuguese, and you should uh, watch it for yourself, judge for yourself. Okay, so here is Lumiere. Is this which one's the Emma Kellen one? It's one of the those clock. Kids. Uh, oh, hey, McGregor, how are you doing? <laughs> Uh, We've seen McGregor a lot recently, aren't we? Not doing so well. Hello there. That, but that, 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 that's the interesting thing. Uh, that, that's, the, that's the interesting thing, Joba. Obviously, uh, the idea was try to get an all African Portuguese cast. The problem, Joba, is that there's at the time now it's changed since then. At the time, Joba, there were no big prominent voice actresses that were uh, Afri of African descent. So they had to get somebody out. They had to think out. So instead of actually doing some kind of casting session to try to find people who could do it, uh, no, let's just get a model to do it. So yes, folks, we have indeed here Obi Wan Kenobi and Gandalf here as a candlestick and a clock. Mm hmm. Change the scenery. Rule number one, people, whenever you tell someone that, oh, there's nothing important there or to not go there, that tends to tempt people to go there. You should use the reverse psychology here. Oh, the West Wing? The West Wing is the most amazing part of the castle. Uh, uh, always go there. Always <laughs> go there. Hey, the just... storm apparently cost up to two hundred and fifty-five million dollars. And to give them credit, well, it does well, seem like they it, actually did use that budget. It, 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 does, it mm -hmm. does show. It does show visually, definitely, because the set design is really good and which, the effects are really good. It, which makes it the um, at least according to Wikipedia, it makes it the fifteenth highest highest costing movie of all time, just a few million behind Spider-Man Three. But still quite a ways away from Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. Mm -hmm. Is the that the most expensive? Yes, it cost three hundred and seventy-nine million dollars. Ah, okay. Well, uh, wow. and once again, and once again, Lumiere and Plumetta are a thing. Also, guys, I got a bad news. There's a bit of a critical research fa fail regarding, you know, um, society being against women learning to read. Now, <clears throat> oh. Anyway, the entire idea of Belle being discouraged from teaching a young girl to read, the original movie gets a pass because it's deliberately pretty vague when it takes place. However, the remake takes place in a period that can be narrowed down to pre-revolution oh. France. At that point of history, discrimination against female literacy was scarcely true. Magazines for women and girls were quite common, in fact. Where this slips into the critical territory is that the original Beauty and the Beast was at one point published in such a magazine. So, technically, <laughs> it should be A-OK -okay for her to read. So, basically, what that scene was just put in here to... Uh, Girl power! Uh, yeah, basically. Um, okay, correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, but I don't remember a scene from the original animated film where someone is bothered by the fact that the woman is reading. I don't remember that. They or, weren't reading. That, that was just Gaston, and Gaston was, you know... Uh, well, not really the same thing as what this movie does, if you ask me. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Also, because... the other characters did comment on her reading, but not the fact that she reads. The, it's just the amount that she reads. Uh, That's what they what said, they uh, you're thinking of that verse from the, so from the song Bell, she wrote, which I, with her nose stuck in a book. It's not so much that they have a problem with her reading, it's more so that every time they see her, she's always reading and doing that's, nothing that's, else. That's, that's, what I, that's what I just said. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's what I just said. Well, well I, was, <laughs> I was helping your point. Uh, oh, look okay. at that. Of course, she's a princess stuck in a high point in the tower. Oh! I haven't seen that before. You know, Gaston, you know, Gaston, uh, considering your situation, you can do better. Just have a harem. <laughs> also, uh, who, who, unless who, who, you... There's no law saying that you have to settle down. Just have a harem. I mean, also, Lord knows. unless you... Unless you, like, own this 
pub or like work here, I'm pretty sure you can't cook your roadkill over the fire. That's oh. pretty unsanitary. Okay, okay, okay. Do give this movie some credit, actually. They sort of imply that LeFou is paying for the song, including the upcoming song. Yeah, that's a thing, honestly. We're only 36 minutes in and we're already getting the villain song. Whereas in the movie, I feel like it was a bit later. And then again, the movie was shorter. Hey. They changed. They changed some of the orders of the events, uh, basically. But yeah, but yeah, this song, this rendition is also really good because you know Josh Gad, Josh Gad, and Josh Gad is awesome. So yeah, definitely. Josh mostly... Gad, I swear I've seen him in stuff before. Frozen. It's more, it's more sort of... Yeah, yeah, he's all off in Frozen. He's I he was I also Frozen. He's also was isn't does it isn't he about to get a role in the MCU as well? Oh, I, I think. think so too. I don't recall which one. Um. Well, whatever. Um. Uh. It's more so when it comes to back to Gaston. It's more so that I don't know when I look at this guy, I just don't see Gaston. I just don't. Like he looks like a, <laughs> he looks like a, a he looks like a random <laughs> schmo. Okay, like, okay, I, I, okay, I, okay, okay. I'll admit that was funny. Too much. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, like I said, when I when I when I look at this guy, I don't see guys. I just see a random schmo that I usually bump into the street every day. <laughs> Basically, that's what I see. He's not like he's not like jacked enough. It's not even so much that it's jacked. Um, yeah, that is true. Him being a bit more jacked would have helped. But I don't know that face. That it's like, it, okay. Remember that moment in in Meet the Robinsons, Shiro, right? where um, mm -hmm. where Bud looks at Lewis at the end of the movie and goes, mm, "You don't look like a Lewis. You look more like a Cornelius." That's basically how I feel about this guy playing Gaston. When I look, it doesn't look like a Gaston. It looks like somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think I get what you mean, though. Again, they're definitely trying to portray Gaston in a way that is. Somewhat more realistic and more grounded. That is a bad idea. Gaston is supposed to be the ultra duper super duper alpha male Chad. He is supposed he's to He's ham. Like he's a larger than life character. The idea mm -hmm. and yeah, and yeah, and yeah, like I said, it's shown that LeFou is actually paying people to cover what is going on in this thing because yeah, like sure I mentioned, any well respecting pub would probably not allow this stuff to go on easily. It makes me wonder where the heck LeFou's getting all the money for this. But uh, anyway, but yeah. The the idea of Gaston is that essentially he is supposed to be, you know, this big lovable lug. But he uses that boisterous personality to hide a, a deeply psychotic villainous side underneath. Which comes up later which shows that he is definitely the real beast of the Mentoneer. And yet here they have him and now so dressing I'm... up as Captain Hook for some reason. And it's that line from later in the movie. You're, he's he's not a beast, Gaston. You are. Yeah. Whereas here again, maybe they want to go for something slightly more realistic, but I don't know. I feel like that just takes away more of the fun of Gaston. And Especially come considering how writing wise, they're still pretty much writing him more or less. Yeah, we have that changes that Joe already discussed, but at the same time, char characterization wise. And in terms of personality, yeah, he kind of acts pretty much in still in that same mold. So it really is. I, may, I, I guess this actor is not uh, not that good at playing these kinds of characters. Oh no, 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 no! I think Luke Evans is actually good at playing, you know, over the top villains before. Like I said, he he was He's a good singer. Yeah, and he oh, oh, definitely. There's only one bad singer in this movie, though, like we've said. <laughs> I think when it comes to Luke Evans, I, I'm I'm gonna blame it more on the direction and the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More so the direction and script regarding Luke Evans rather than Luke Evans himself. Yeah, plus, um, plus, you know, um, I mean, I know the original film had this as well, but it is still a bit, it is still a bit, it's still, still a bit weird that, you know, we have a guy, a guy who's from France and, um, you know, he's obviously from the incredibly French city of Ponty. Oh, hold on. <laughs> That's where Luke Evans is from. Okay, here's another change to oh, the original Oh, is we'll help you out scene? That's the thing. In the original version, Maurice was just laughed out and booted out. Yep. 
Here it's somewhat different. Well, he's laughed at. Well, again, just watch the scene. Well, I mean, we had 20 degree weather in March or some. <coughs> yeah, climate change does some shit. Just ask Texas. So, yeah, here's the thing. Gaston is actually willing to help Maurice. Nah, he's being a manipulative sack of shit. You would think so, Shuri, but no, he's actually legit gonna help out Maurice. Now, sure, later on, you know, stuff goes a little sideways, but that's only because he loses his patience. Otherwise, no, he is legit trying to help Maurice here. Now, okay, it's probably obviously it, to get into her father's good grace. It's, it's to get to Belle, yeah. That said, though, again, it is interesting how they're making Gaston a lot more tolerant of stuff to try and get what he wants. Like, I wonder if it's their way of saying, oh, he's trying to be a gentleman, but the more Belle and her father reject him, the more psychotic he gets. It's, and it's also, we yeah. have uh, Emma Thompson as Mrs. Potts. Cool. Which makes sense, you know, that's, yeah, that's, pro uh, uh, unless you get Angela Lensbury back. That's, yeah, the other second choice that you would normally use, yes. Emma Thompson, yes. <laughs> I forgot, who plays Cogsworth in this one? Ian McCown. Oh, yeah, that's that's right. Like I said, huh. Obi-Wan Kenobi and Gandalf. Charm the prisoner. Next thing you know, the critics will be starting to claim that it's Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> do, do we actually want to address that elephant? Unfortunately, Emma Watson tried to address it, and uh, let's just say she probably didn't do it in the best way. Oh, so I'm guessing I haven't seen Andrew. Wait, Zong. wait, what happened? So, so I'm guessing, Joel, what you're telling me is that Emma is yet one of those celebrities that shouldn't give interviews. Probably. Well, maybe, okay, I'll just read this expert from TV Trips here. <clears throat> the long-standing debate over whether Belle and Beast's relationship is Stockholm Syndrome or not has been renewed with this remake to the point that Emma Watson was questioned about it in an interview with Entertainment Weekly a month before the film's release. To f suffice it to say, she didn't exactly put the issue to bed with her claims that it isn't since Disney <clears throat> wouldn't want the lead actress in a gigantic would-be blockbuster disparaging it to the press. Which kind of implied that it might have been that case, but they were just telling her to keep her mouth shut about it. Oh, the irony. Some critics of the finished film argue that it is an unhealthy relationship and that this review argues it's only made worse by the fact that in this version, the enchanted objects are serving as shipper on deck, not just in hopes of becoming human again, but there is admittedly another... There's another condition to this curse here, which we'll get to later, and have no problem with manipulating their relationship to do so. Mm -hmm. That being said, one thing people also have to remember when it comes to to this relationship, you have to understand, everybody, that the Brothers Grimm wrote this story. Uh, well, how long? What which year? What, the point is, they wrote it in the pre centuries ago. At this point, you know, like it, this was written in a much more primitive time in hum in human society back when people didn't actually think about these things. So, and yeah, so. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can update it, but at the same time, there's only so much you can update before you basically turn into a completely different story, you yeah. know? You know what's sad? Um, it, I, I would have... It's literally... Yeah, like, be oh, Beast God. trapping Belle in the castle is necessary for the story. Like, it's... Yeah, it is kind of iffy, I agree. But it's one of those things where you kind of just have to understand the, the time that this story was written. Yes, you were, you were saying something? Uh, well, actually, Jova spoke first. Did you want to go first, Jova? When you get or... down to it, like, in the context of a story, the sorceress really did put the beast in a crap position. Like, let's be honest, sure, yeah, it's all about what's on the inside. But realistically speaking, would you stay willingly with somebody who looks like that, you know, at first sight, and not assume the worst? 
Well, Jova, they could have just perfectly, uh, you know, non. Yeah, non <laughs> It's, it's, it's like it's like Arnold said in Terminator Dark Fate, non-physical love, or what was the term he used? Oh, no, 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 you no. Know? Okay, 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 okay. My point is like, well, most people would probably run in terror of the beast, essentially, without, oh, you know, being well, forced well, to stay. I'm talking about well, the story. Yeah. I'm talking about the story in general and why, unfortunately, while there may be some implications of Stockholm Syndrome, in yeah. a way, you kind of have a sorceress to blame, seeing as how... No woman would have stayed around long enough unless something like this happened, at yeah, least as far as we know. Job, but the only way you could do that is by turning Belle into a completely, overly, super irrealistically nice person who will not even flinch at the fact that she just saw a beast. She immediately thinks, oh, he looks like this, but it's okay, as long as he's nice on the inside. Like, uh, you know, they basically would have to turn her into a completely unrealistic person that doesn't behave like any actual person does. Not only that, know? not only that, but a person in this time and age here where there was still some rumblings about frightening stuff like witchcraft and sorcery and whatnot, and you're telling me that a woman in that day and age wouldn't run in terror at the sight of what clearly looks like a hell hound on two legs <laughs> and, and, and keep in mind everybody disney's bell even in the original film is always portrayed as a very progressive character compared to the rest of the society she's around in and know? even she so was it's... still scared at the beast the first time we she saw him exactly uh shira you, you go ahead uh yeah um just uh very quickly uh i wouldn't i'm not sure if it's quite stockholm syndrome but it's still not healthy anyway, because um, you say it's about the time period it was written. Um, I wouldn't say that necessarily, because unfortunately, it's still an issue that exists to this day. Uh, not one, uh, not one I personally experienced because of obvious reasons. But um, there's always it's it's another story, and I and I didn't expect them to change it, nor would I want them to. But it's just another story where a woman is expected to fix a man's issues and, sure, sure, sure. and again this version unfortunately adds on some extra baggage to those issues but again we'll get to that later this is I, I i totally like understand like you know bell like them lock it there is a reason bell is being locked in here and all that like i get the story and again i don't expect them to change it because they're remaking a story that already exists but still, that, that's what the relationship is not healthy, but it is what oh, it, it is, is what I'm oh, saying. No, it isn't. Mm -hmm. the, thing. the reason I brought up the time period here is not so much because I was trying to defend what they wrote. The Oh, no, I, ne I, ne I never thought you were doing that, but, but carry on. But, 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 but what I meant is that, okay, see, here's the thing. I, obviously, I don't know the Brothers Grimm. We don't know if they were totally okay with relationships like this or not. We don't know them. It's been, uh, I don't think anybody ever asked them that when they were uh, uh, alive, so we don't know. We can only guess yeah. what their actual thoughts on the matter was. The point is, when they wrote this, I'm willing to give them the, be the benefit of the doubt and say that uh, they were just writing this and just thinking of the higher, of the, of the bigger picture. You know, it's these people who who it's these people who like she, oh wait she... hold on i gotta stop you again because this point okay this is widely a lot of people's favorite scene in the movie why because this may possibly be the closest we'll ever get to a literally great adaptation if not in some cases what some people consider actually a bit of an improvement because they do fix some plot holes in some of the lyrics regarding, you know, the living dishes or whatnot here and there. So, yeah, this is Be Our Guest. Thank goodness Ian McGregor can sing. Well, it's Ian McGregor, the guy, uh, the guy is made of awesome. But uh, am I the one? Am I the uh, one who finds it weird that he's pretty, pretty much the only person who puts on a French accent for a story that takes place in France? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it, it is a bit. It is a bit. Oh, we got. It's like I said earlier, we got our main villain, who's from um, who's from Pontypool. Um, everyone, everyone else we... has uh, got oh. a varying degree of an English accent. Yes, Yuri. Go ahead, Pedro. Uh, no. It's more so, okay, I'm willing to give the Brothers Grimm the benefit of the doubt and say that they were only thinking of the higher picture. They were thinking, oh, okay, uh, she have, at the beginning thinks that he that he's just as bad as he looks, but then over the course of, of, of the story, he gets to know him better and starts to, uh, starts, to appreciate, starts to like him as a person, 
just because of who he is. That doesn't obviously, uh, you know, like yourself, like, because of the way it's written and because of the way they get to that point, there's problems, like we've said. But I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt that maybe they weren't thinking of, they didn't even, that didn't even come across their minds. Again, going back to my point that this was the, the, the original story was written in a much more, more primitive time where people were not as self conscious about these things as we are now. I you mean, know? look so at I'm the... Willing to give the benefit of the doubt when it comes because there were a shit ton of stories written in that time period that had even worse problems than this. I mean, so, and it's it was just it, it was it, it's literally I know it's a cliche to coin that term, but it literally was a product of its time. The thing is, though, I think I'm not sure about this case. But um, in in the cases of other stories with different subject matters, people knew at certain time periods that the things they were doing were wrong. They just didn't care because oh, they could get away with it. Sorry, are you by any sorry are you by any chance bringing up uh, the version of Sleeping Beauty that involves the prince literally having sex with the princess while she's asleep, and the only reason she wakes up is because the baby that she has as a result of the pregnancy sucks the foreign out of her thumb. I did not know about any of that. What the fuck? Wait, wait, wait. That's the original version of the, that's the original version of the story, Shuri. It's apparently oh, not. Wow. It, it's apparently not the original version, but it's like the second version or third version ever made or whatnot here and there. I'm not touching that with a ten foot pole. No, okay, again, again, it's one of those things where again, remember, this it was written at the time. If I remember correctly, when that story was written, because. Sleeping Beauty is one of the oldest fairy tales out there, if I remember correctly. If I remember correctly, Sleeping Beauty was written at a time where, uh, yeah, it was written at a time where where women were were literally just treated as property. I think still at that point. Um, like I, I, I again, correct me if I'm wrong. If there's anybody who knows history better, like uh, it's it really is one of those cases where, and don't get me wrong, it was wrong then and it's wrong now. Of course, I'm not oh, trying yeah. to defend that. I'm just, yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Even though it's not, it's undefensible and all that shit. Uh, I can at the very least understand. Um, I, I can at least understand why the story is written this way. It was Pretty written much. this way because it was written this way because the people who wrote it, this was a this was a status quo as far as as you know, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, the media will always reflect the time we live in. And from like, what I understand, you... to their credits, the Brothers Grimm were not the ones who wrote the version, that version of Sleeping Beauty. That was like a different version. Their version still had to like I'm be, seeing. you know, True Love's first kiss, if I recall correctly. Also, yeah, okay. they pretty so, much turned Be Our uh... Guest into a miniature It's a Small World rendition. That is pretty cool. This is great, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like This is a great dinner show. But bringing the topic a bit back to Beauty and the Beast, I'll say this. Still the best version in regards to the relationship between Beauty and the Beast is the original animated Disney version. Why? Because even though she's a prisoner, Belle does not take crap from the Beast. Hell, the first... No. Hell, the first chance to get, she runs from the beast, but she does go back to actually help him after he saves her life. And then from there, the relationship properly flows here and there. Sadly, this... Well, they're still here, if I remember correctly, aren't they? Oh, yeah, still, yeah, still here, but it's like, well, I think, th like I said, there's unfortunately sort of a bit of an issue where you could argue that Belle is kind of guilted into falling in love with him. Again, that has to do more so with, like, the full extent of what the curse does. But, again, we haven't gotten to that yet. You mentioned it something basically... called the West Wing. That's that, that's that TV show. Oh, the Castle West Wing. It basically boils down... Uh... Oh, right, there's also this other thing about the castle constantly falling apart, apparently, due to stuff. Mm -hmm. That's not dangerous at all for a person to hang out in. She's been in Hogwarts, she's fine. And of course, she just happens to go to the West Wing by chance. Okay. I think someone mentioned the West Wing just a bit earlier. It's weird, though, how she just happens to stumble upon the West Wing in this version. Granted, she sort of did that in the original, too, but that was after veering off path here and there. Here, it's just like, oh, I guess you chose to go to the most dangerous place you could find, girl. Like, here's a better thing what they should have done here. Hey, don't go to the West Wing because it's literally falling apart and you could fall off of the crumbling rubble. As opposed to trying to hide it. Alright, let me see. 
Uh, was there something else you wanted to mention, Paige? Uh, no, I'm looking into the original story. Oh, the original story was written. The original Sleeping Beauty was written by Charles Perrault. Oh, okay, that's that's oh. it, Charles Perrault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, basically, yeah. Basically, basically, for those who don't know, aside from the Brothers Grimm, Charles Perrault was the other big titan of fairy tale writing, basically. Like, like, here's the thing: the Brothers Grimm definitely did create some of their own stories, but one thing they mainly did was the collecting of the stories while also adapting them to make them more sanitized. Yeah, sanitized back in the day, believe it or not. Also, yeah, oh, the... Uh, yeah, from what I'm seeing here, apparently Jova is correct. Apparently that version that Jova described is like the second or third or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing here, Sherry, that the, the original version was published in 1528. So oh, yeah, wow. I, I, I was correct. It is one of the oldest fairy tales. I, I thought it was, yeah. Um, so yeah, so... Remember, she wrote 1528, the 15th century still. Uh, uh, so at the time, yeah, no wonder a story like this got written that time because it was a very dark time compared to today's standards, obviously. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a really easy escape. <laughs> yeah, I know. They were shutting and locking everything down, but they forgot the dog door. And they only called to her after she leaves to tell her, hey, it's dangerous out there. Like, maybe saying it's dangerous out there would have been the first thing to say rather than saying, oh, stop her from escaping. Yeah, I mean, I mean, so far this film's, um, this film's fine. It's just those little, um, it's just those little niggly things that are a bit, um, yeah. weird. Like, we have, like, a, like, a, like we have, we have, we've had this just where, um, where, you know, apparently they're like, no, don't, stop, don't come back. Yeah, no, um, don't come back. We have, we have, we have a French guy not understanding his own language for the dumb I can joke. tell you this, I can tell you this, that uh, the second half is better. Because uh, the second half of the movie is definitely the better half. Um, oh, I guess that was the leader because he has a scar on his face. <laughs> we're gonna get the best song in the in the, the the best original song. We're gonna also finally get the backstory of Belle's mom, which is a, a nice welcome addition. So also like the storming the castle scene for this. No, it's version. interesting. This was co-written by one of the guys who was who co-wrote a lot a, a few of the uh, director DVD Disney sequels in the two thousands. Yeah, Jungle so. Book, Jungle Book two. Maybe, maybe. Maybe he had these ideas for potential Beauty and the Beast um, mm. direct DVD. I have my doubts. Or something, but I don't know. Um, I'm really Jungle... good that already have one. Especially because Jungle Book 2 was basically just a rehash of the first one. <laughs> they bring back Shark Khan, even. <laughs> I guess he technically didn't die in that version, so. Sure, why not? Fine. I guess. It's just... I, I get that. It's just that really this is the best you could come up with. <laughs> Yeah, I really don't know what they're thinking with Jungle Book. Oh, Beast is dead. Uh, final thoughts, guys. Wait. We're only minute. halfway through. Oh, here we go. Sure, here we go. Here, check this out. In the original uh, nineteen twenty-eight Sleeping Beauty, a princess named Zelandine falls in love with a man named Troilus. Troilus. Her, her father sends him to perform tasks to prove himself worthy of her. Oh, okay. That's actually not that bad. And while <laughs> he is gone, Zelandine falls into an enchanted sleep. Oh, here we go. Troilus finds oh, great. her. There you go, right. Troilus finds her and impregnates her in her sleep. When their child is born, the child draws from her finger the flax that caused her sleep. She realizes from the ring Troilus. Blah, blah, blah. The point is, yeah, the this was a this was this is definitely a 15th century story. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's for good reason that that story is never real. That version of the story, from what I've seen in modern times, like again, even oh. Disney knew back in like you know. The 20th nice. century. Yeah. There, there's that's, no that's way not... we can fluff this one up. <laughs> it's more. It's one of those cases where. Uh, uh, it's one... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, this bit. Okay, now we're about to get that bit about Gaston I was mentioning earlier. So, yeah, again, there's apparently this barrier magic that now apparently hides the way to the path. Again. And I don't think they explain that, do they? Eh, they sort of explain it, but then they don't explain the implications. Like, again, if the magic is to keep anyone from finding their way in, why were two people able to find their way in back to back? Did the magic decide, okay, Ooh. that's two people in and out here, time to close it up again. Time to close shop.
<laughs> okay. I thought, so, gonna rant. So, I, thought, I thought he was going to rant at him and say, you can take your deep breaths and stick them up here. And so LeFou is also kind of his, uh, you know, uh, what's, the, what's the term? Oh, like there the, you go. He states it out right. At least he's honest about it. Which, yeah. Uh, Actually, that's a good point, though. Personal, so th that's it. LeFou is also Gaston's personal trainer, it seems. Yep. Of sorts. Think happy thoughts. Back to the Sidekick, I guess. Okay. No, 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 no. So see, he said deep breaths, and now happy thoughts. And he's literally trying to keep his psyche intact. And look literally. at that. Yeah. <laughs> about him about the war. Well, not only that, reminding him about blood, guts, and widows. Oh, the it's, many it's, widows. If that's what calms him down, you know. It, it's a joke, though. Get it? He's a villain, therefore he loves thinking about the oh. blood. Oh! When, when did the French Revolution happen? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We don't know when this movie takes place, but it sort of is clocked to be towards pre-revolution France, but this is close to one of the wars. So, yeah. Gaston's a freaking psychopath. Like, it's like, oh, you will never marry my daughter? Well, and then Gaston decides to kill him just right there and then. Which... And I'm going to leave you there. Bye. Okay. I'm a bit split on this. On the one hand, yeah, Gaston was a psychopath in the original, but the idea was like, oh, it was closer towards the end when we see he's a psychopath. Here. Oh, God, we're not even halfway through yet, technically. So. Yeah. I guess. Make it... sense of it. Hmm. One could argue maybe they're trying to do more of it. One could also argue that they're maybe kind of showing their hand a little too early with him. What? You're about to say something, Shuri? I just thought maybe they were trying to flush it out a bit more. That could be too. Whether it paid off or not is a different conversation. Well, what do you think? Uh huh. I don't. I don't mind it personally. Uh, okay, okay. Oh, here we I go. Okay, so in this version, it is because of his father that he has twisted the way he is. Okay, find enough origin. You know, we, yeah, we get we get a pro more proper backstory. Yeah. For him My only well. problem with this is that again, it makes the sorceress come off as more of a dick here. Oh, you were raised terribly by your father. Well, I'm going to blame you entirely and curse you and your staff for what your father warped you into. I'm not sure that she knew about that, but yeah, the implications are still. Not great. I mean, sure, she's a sorceress. Surely she could have done something of a background check or something. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think it's one of those cases where um, I feel like what they should have done is they should have just had the the dying mom. Just go full Hino on this crap. Like, yeah, just, have him have a dead, just have him have a dead mom, you know? As opposed um, to a father who has to specifically make him the way he is. Because in that case... You can legit just place blame on his father, and I don't know. Have us maybe the sorceress could have raised him better or something. You could literally just have that. Okay, ever since his mom died, he got he got bitter. You know, like uh, that's it, basically. Yeah, I think that definitely would have been better. Yeah, as opposed to making him that. Oh, it's because of his dad. He's terrible again. If it's because of his dad that he's terrible, then. I mean, don't get me wrong, him being apparently a terrible person who only valued the most beautiful people, which I guess made him inclusive because he considered some of the most beautiful people to be, you know, dark-skinned in a time where that would probably be seen as sacrilegious, so... Uh, so essentially the sorceress punished one of the few more tolerant souls in a time where racism Especially... was rampant. And someone of his status would be more of a dick also. So, yeah, it's a bit strange. Again, it's... the implications here. Again, now, okay, maybe if they were just having this be as whimsical and whatnot, but again, they're definitely trying to make this more grounded here. So if you're going to make it more grounded, I have to treat it as such, especially given the time date still. That said, though, this song is good. Except for Emma Watson's bits. Again, I'm sorry, Emma, but... 
True, you could have gotten singing lessons. Emma, Emma is like Jova said. It's just like in the Portuguese *The Princess of the Frog*. The, the 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 female lead is holding everybody back. And here's the problem here: because she's the female lead, of course she's going to be the one who sings the most. Yeah. That's the thing. I mentioned the auto tune earlier, and auto tune like is used for uh, like. Using autotune isn't an inherently bad thing. It's actually used for some really cool effects. And also to touch up on random notes here and there, just so people don't have to record entire things over and over again. Oh, wait, again. hold on. No, I have to point this very... out. Okay. So sure. here's the thing. With the curse here, in the original version, it was essentially that if the curse went through, then they would probably remain objects forever. Here... If the beast does not find true love, they will all effectively die. Like, they'll become yeah. antiques and not be able to move here. Now, on the one hand, this does add some pretty interesting stakes here. On the other hand, this raises a bit of a Stockholm Syndrome problem here. Belle has a ton of pressure put on her. It's like, oh, if you don't love this guy, we'll all die. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did they specifically say to her, that she has to fall in love with him or something. Well, 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 they didn't say that she has to fall in love with him, but again, think about it. How many random women are just gonna come around and fall in love with a beast here and all that? Oh, okay. oh, 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 I get that, Joe, but oh, in the original animated film, Belle was completely unaware of the curse and the terms of the curse. Which, completely unaware. Which definitely Isn't did. The here? No, 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 no. Oh, Pedro, Pedro. The scene we just saw was them literally telling her that the oh. curse is essentially like this. If the curse is not revoked uh -oh. in time, by the time the last petal falls, yeah, they effectively okay, so die. Did they specifically state that uh, a woman must fall in love with him? Pretty much. I mean, I mean, they may not have said it directly, but it's essentially like, you know, oh, he has to, you know, do stuff okay, that then. would involve... He has to learn to love or something. Oh, uh, okay. If if they just say he has to learn to love, that's fine. I mean, they just say he has to learn to love. It doesn't necessarily mean her. Let me put it right I... this. Oh, mm. it's all in the inflections and tones, and I wasn't paying increasingly attention to the dialogue, but it pretty much might as well have been saying, yeah, he pretty much needs to find true love or we die. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right. I was just oh, thinking, shop. like, a as silly as it, as it would be, like, why couldn't this story like, in the first place, have just been about her helping him find love with somebody else. That Like, uh, why, why does it have to be her? Like, why does she have to have all this uh, pressure? To be honest, I'm, I'm it creates to, problems. To, to be honest, considering how, um, how problematic this movie's gotten, um, quite recently i thought you guys hate i thought you guys would hate this movie more i mean it's got it's got all the usual trappings you guys normally don't like okay let me but, put... you know if you don't marry this thing this thing this bad thing will happen to everyone else and, well, and, all, the, the, thing and all the other crazy stuff i don't I think mean, i've ever mentioned an issue with that have i here's the thing Dwebs. we're the stuff we're talking about the old uh uh, syndrome thing, the the Stockholm syndrome Stock thing, syndrome, yeah. and then the thing, you know, yeah, that's more of an implication rather than an actual flaw of the narrative itself. Because if you just if you just put the whole Stockholm syndrome implication shit out of the equation, just judge the movie as it is, just judge the story. Is the story actually working for what the themes are? Are then they, then that's fine. You know, like what we're doing is basically we're just uh, you know, kind of. Talking about the implications more than the actual narrative right now, because you know everybody already knows what this. What this I mean, everybody knows the story of Beauty and the Beast by this point. Well, we all know how it ends. Let me put it like mm -hmm. this, Dwibs. When it comes to something like 2020's Mulan here, you can bet we'll be talking about the legit problems directly with the writing here. When it comes to a movie like this per se, while yeah, there are some issues with the writing compared to the original, a lot of the problems we do make just mainly stem from maybe they didn't think this out through well enough. I mean, and, and like I said, it's in a way where I still consider it overall good. It's just that it has a lot of issues here. And mind you... Not to mention, most of these implications was already present in the original element in the film to begin with anyway. So. Well, okay, mm -hmm. okay. That being said, I have pointed out the whole critical research failure stuff here and how again the, when you get down to it this guy was technically punished for being one of the more accepting people of people of different skin tones and colors when you get down to it like yeah sure there's there's silly stuff oh, like yeah, that sure, however 
Uh, one thing that they do add that's really a good idea is they bond over their mutual love of reading. That's a great idea. That I do story, love, yeah. Actually. That's, that's a, a great idea. That's another mm -hmm. reason why I still do like this remake here. It does make a lot of baffling decisions, but for every baffling decision, I can count at least two or three actually really great decisions that... In it elaborates on a lot of the right things. Yeah. I... I'll say this. To answer your question, Shiro, oh, go ahead. I can sort of get why this movie is longer than the original, because they do actually give more time for scenes that do help Belle and Beast's relationship. Mm-hmm. To, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yes. to answer your question, Shiro, well, again, to answer your question, Shiro, why couldn't it be that way? Well, again, for the reasons that we've already gone through, that's how the story, the story was written a long time, and that's how the story is, and, you know, people don't change it because, you know, this is how people are used to it. That being well, said... Well, I mean, like, in the first place, like, a lot of these problems could have gone away if it was just slightly well, yeah. different. And well, that, that would require the Brothers Grimm to actually think about the horrible implications that the things they were writing. And that's well, that yeah, yeah. Again, <laughs> to, the bro to the Brothers Grimm credit, for the time that they were making stuff, their versions were the most sanitized versions of some of the fairy tales like we actually yeah, have the that, if there's one thing if there's one thing about um what's going on on you know social media reactions that kind of stuff that i don't really understand is that if is that you know apparently because of how different the times were back then um you know the, and all the stuff that isn't really as um thought of as what wasn't thought of as much back then as it is now Mm -hmm. there's, there's a few that would there's a few that have, have this weird implication that apparently that apparently apparently the writers back then were <laughs> oh the god no yeah. <sighs> that's one of my favorite verses in the original film and she <laughs> completely butchered it dear lord uh, emma anyway, uh, anyway it's a combination um, of terrible singing and terrible autotune the singing doesn't work and the autotune that's trying to make it work still doesn't work Yes, whoops, continue. Anyway, as I was saying, you know, there's this weird thing going on, you know, is that apparently, you know, back, back, I'm not saying it's everywhere, but I see the few examples where, uh, because of, you know, the different times and different cultures and all that, with stuff like this, is that apparently, is that apparently, is that apparently if you were writing like this, even back then, you were a terrible person or some, some. No, okay, okay, here, here, here's the basic gist of it, whoops. Um, Here's the basic gist of it. Back then, uh, what per, per, liking something uh, like the the 1528, you know, if you liked something like this in the 15th century, if uh, you know, you weren't considered a bad person because the the standards for for good and bad were different in society compared to today. You know, that's the, that's the, that's what people need to remember. By the standards of their society, the brothers game were perfectly fine people. So, uh, it really is one of those cases where, again, people have to remember that society's values of good and wrong are change over time, you know, like, uh, and you can't expect a person to, oh, to be... Oh, she got him reading. Also... And it's unreasonable. Sorry, go ahead. Also, not for nothing, but Guinevere and Lancelot were literally two cheating hearts who kind of ended up, uh, um... <laughs> Contributing to yeah. the fall of Camelot. Romance! Sure. Again! A romance about Guinevere See, cheating on See, King <laughs> Arthur. See, there you go, she was. She was even making the same point, like, uh, where, um, where the Beast was basically, you know, uh, overanalyzing the story, and and, 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 and that was like, it's a romance. Look, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's chill, dude. See? See, that attitude is why Twilight exists. Oh. Right? We can't have that. Well, Shiroi, it's almost like this is made by the same director of Twilight. Oh, wait a minute. Hmm. Well, the problem with those movies wasn't so much... The, the, the Breaking Down movies wasn't so much the directing, it was just the writing. Also, I love how yeah. the Beast points out that her village sounds terrible. Like, could this be some social commentary on how things are terrible? Again! The guy who understands her, and he's the one who got cut. He's the one who got cursed by turning into a beast here. Again, that is legit one oh, thing. To, oh, here's another addition. Another little gift from the Enchantress. Okay, so here's the thing. The Enchantress basically said he would be a prisoner of his own castle here, and then she also gave him a book that can literally take him anywhere. Eh. Well, actually, Jova, I can I can get it behind this. Why? Because as he himself is going to put later, yeah. 
Exactly. True. Now yeah. He gets, well, he gets to see for himself how much people uh, are afraid of him on the outside. There he goes. It, it's another form of torture. It, it, it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's literally a blessing. In the, sorry, it's literally a curse disguised as a blessing. That said, though, there is one bit of a plot hole here, though. Using that book, he can go anywhere. That means he would eventually find a woman who is actually into that and yes folks there were plenty of kinky people even back in the medieval well, ages well, here and there well remember though we have to think from the logic of the story the story specifically stated at the beginning who could ever love a beast it's like they're literally going off the the sorceress was literally going off the assumption that nobody could possibly love this beast hey guys nobody. look we're in notre dame could this be set up for the eventual hunchback of notre dame live action movie that one i am not looking forward to me neither um, to finish my, uh, to finish real quick, basically that's, it's unreasonable to expect a person from the 15th century to be a good person by 2021 standards. Life it's, is it's incredibly, it's, it's, incredibly complicated that way with how morals it, it, can it, change. It, 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 that, that, that's why, that's why I don't like those kinds of arguments because like you're expecting a person from 500 years ago to be a good person by today's standard. That, that's unreasonable. You realize that, right? Also, guys, <laughs> so here's a bit of an interesting bit. They just so happen to come into a particular house in Paris. Now, I'll admit here, I kind of did a bit of a double take here. Okay, Dwibs, you may remember earlier in the movie how Maurice was mentioning something about, you know, his wife here and there and the song here and there. And now we're getting sort of a reprisal of that song he was singing which, there. Uh, which, tells the, which tells, explains that, yeah. Um, uh, you know, for... I, I, I don't think it's a good sign for someone who can't sing. She sure sings a lot. Yeah. Well, like no, I no, said, no, she's no. the main. It's even. Oh. It's it's even it's even worse than Piers Brosnan in um in Mamma Mia. He only had two songs. I mean, yeah, yeah, sure, he butchered them both. But it's still only two songs. Emma Watson has like. Oh, five. Okay. Yeah. I would rather have an entire album from Emma than whatever the hell Piers did. Oh. Okay, I'm going, sorry. Okay, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So it turns out it's a musical. Hold on, dude. It turns out being an issue. Anyway, so it turns out Emma's sorry, Belle's mother died from the bubonic plague here. For those who know, oh. bubonic plague was one of the absolute, absolute worst diseases running across well the world in general, mainly in Europe, also known as yeah. the Black Death. Yeah, we're uh, play Plague Tale as well, if you want a, a, a cool take on that concept as well for a story. Um, yeah, that's exactly it. I do like it's how... Also, the... It's also an illness that technically still exists, but obviously it's not really a problem anymore. Yeah, yeah, because we have uh, shots for that. Okay, um, um... here's another scene that's sort of going to dedicate something to a certain character being a dick, but I can't say that that character certain is a dick because, well, well, saying anything more might be spoiling. Anyway, as I was saying, as I was saying earlier, seeing, I have, seeing, as, uh, seeing as I'm having to hear, Hold on. seeing as I'm having to hear a lot more of um, Emma Watson's bad thinking compared to Pierce's, I'm going to... I'm not saying Pierce is any good, but I'd rather have that than this. At least there's not many there. Yeah, like, that's the thing. What <laughs> Emma, Emma may not be as bad as Pierce, but her singing really brings the film down even more. So, yeah, Maurice pretty much yeah. calls him out for leaving him to the wolves here and there, which a lot of people are siding with Maurice on. Until... Yes, Agatha. Hmm, Agatha. Agatha so seems this like is an interesting character scene. called Agatha. This is a movie called Agatha. Uh, you're probably wondering who the hell is this character. We're gonna reveal later who she is. I'll just say this: Agatha's a dick she's because a, she's a she's a she's a mom, isn't she? No, the mom died. <laughs> you know. Oh, I thought... Well, that's going to be the twist. Oh, the mom didn't die. She, uh, the bubonic plague, mutated her into a hag or something. That said, though, yeah, Agatha doesn't speak up in Maurice's defense, regardless of the fact that she literally saved him from outdoors in that regard. So, why she doesn't speak up to anything? I'm just going to say right now, she's a dick. 
Like, mm-hmm. the movie doesn't even really give her a good reason for why she didn't speak up in Maurice's defense after saving his life. Oh, so she's like that. So she's like that character in Persona Five. <laughs> oh, just wait till you see, Dwibs. There's more to Agatha than meets the eye. I'll just say this: you mm-hmm. work. I'll just say this, Dwibs. You were kind of onto something, but you were barking up the wrong tree. There's definitely more to Agatha, but whew, the true identity of her is interesting. So basically, yeah. Gaston has gotten the town to pretty much turn on Maurice. God damn. I mean, that is played by Luke Evans, but the character himself isn't that charismatic. Well, okay, that's the thing. Gaston was a villain who could come off as very charismatic to get things his way here and there. Which, you know... Hmm. Huh. Look, Luke Evans isn't a bad actor or anything, it's just... Yeah. Okay, to be fair, I feel like what that scene needed was more of Gaston convincing the town so rather than just, oh... oh, oh. Yeah. Um we, 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 we tried that already. <laughs> right now, I'm... What if I have to hear her singing again? <laughs> just, that's a really good point. <laughs> just try to stomach it. If you don't find love, then we literally will die. So surely you can maybe sustain it for a bit. Fine, look, but only if look, you have to hear the singing as well. Look, Fine. if she asks you how good of a singer she is, just tell her she's amazing because, you know... Again, uh, if you don't charm well, her but good... That would, but, 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 but that would be lying. I can't do that. <laughs> hey, you'd be surprised what people do for love. It's, uh... In the meantime, I saw right here. Uh, basically, yeah, uh, Joe, I'm seeing here the original Sleeping Beauty from 1958 is exactly that one with the whole, you know... Uh, sleeping right thing. It was Charles Perrault that reinvented it with the whole, you know, free fairies that come in and give the the blessings and shit. No. Oh. So Charles Perrault. So basically, sure, Charles Perrault was the one that uh, completely removed all the terrible crap from Sleeping Beauty. Okay. So, so wait, was that after the second or third version was the one who made it yes. like that? Yeah. Yes. The, 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 that's the thing, Joe. But the one you described—that's the first one from what I'm seeing here from nine, from 1528. It was Charles Perrault who completely retooled the story to the one that we now know today. Okay. It's stuff. time to talk about one of the bigger controversies about this movie: Belle's dress. Okay. Belle's dress from the original is one of the most iconic princess dresses there is. It showcased the amazing animation, and here it looks incredibly yeah, bland. Yeah, I've um, I've seen cosplays. With lot better looking dresses. Which is a shame because the Beast I... costume actually looks pretty flipping awesome here. Again, this unfortunately takes us back to the critical research failure here. Emma Watson notably didn't wear a corset for any of her costumes, arguing that Belle wouldn't be restricted and would dress in order to be able to move freely. However... Here's the thing. Stays in the 18th century were designed much more to support the bust rather than reduce the waist. They were essentially the ancestor of the bra, and by necessity, had to be easy to move in, while still hey, helping the girl in her position. Yeah, Pedro? There you go, it's Emma Thompson singing. Basically, here's the thing. Here's... <sighs> So here's what Bernard... Oh, oh, come on. Emma Thompson lips? You're really going to hate on Emma yeah, Thompson? No, yeah, not oh, Emma Watson. I thought you meant the other Emma, sorry. No, em- Emma no, Thompson. No, 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 no. no. Emma, Emma Thompson, Thompson can sing. Yeah. So here's the thing. Oh, yeah, also from Harry Potter. But, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing. Bernadette Banner has gone on to say this. If I were the costume designer to whom Miss Watson had allegedly refused wearing a corset, I would have amiably and wholeheartedly agreed and then put her in a pair of stays. Because, yeah, again, technically, this is how it worked back then. And I'm sorry, but that dress just looks so bland. Also, um, it's it's funny you say cosplay dwibs because I got a better one since this is Disney. The actors who play the princesses at the park have better dresses. <laughs> oh, for those they're who more know. accurate. Why yeah. is this so plain? I went to and that's the thing. I went to Disneyland Paris around I think it was either the late nineties or two thousand, and I, I think the dresses even back then look better. 
Again, that was 2000. It's a shame. Be- it's a shame because this rendition of the Beauty and the Beast theme is absolutely gorgeous. But yeah, looking at that dress, it's yeah, it doesn't work with the time period, and it looks so bland. Like, was it Emma Watson Compared trying to, to Beast's outfit? Was it Emma Watson trying to be progressive or something? I mean. I'm sorry. Look. I don't know how you can work this into a progressive argument, honestly. Don't you see, Shuri? It's just a plain dress. Don't you see, Shuri? It's a dress that's not superficial and one that lets her truly be herself and move freely around in. Again, look, I'll just say this. Looking fabulous does not mean you're bowing to sexist norms here. If you want to look pretty, you can look pretty here. You don't have to look- I don't think that's what's going on, though. Well, I, I I think it's just a, I think it's just the the costume designers not, you know, doing their stuff right and, maybe. And possibly Emma Watson refusing that certain type of dress as well. That's a bit unclear, but it's sort of implied that yeah. Cuz I be- doubt Disney would have let this happen otherwise. Maybe it's just because, you know, the bit, the uh, the art of clothing is not really my thing, but personally I never really minded the dress. I'm, I, I was just kind of, you know, like maybe. Uh, I mean, it looks okay. I could, it could look better, but I don't me... know, it, it didn't bother me. That's, I guess, that's the best way. I can... I, it didn't bother me personally. Okay, I'm not gonna say like that. All, uh, it, all that means towards being a Disney princess is the dress. I will say this though. Like I said, the original animated classic went out of its way to be gorgeously animated, and that included having fantastic, wonderful elements like. Well, the dress here and there. Call it superficial, but I feel like the live-action movie should respect that by having the dress be absolutely glamorous. Like, imagine if, you know, Cinderella's actual princess dress in the live-action movie was just dull and bland. That would kind of defeat the purpose of the dress that she's wearing, supposed to be, you know, beautiful due to magic here and there. Like, that's kind of some sucky magic if you can't make it look great here and there. Um, interesting thing, and this uh, this wasn't the only musical Bill Condon was involved with this year. Sorry, that that the year this film came out. The same year this film came out, he co-wrote The Greatest Showman. Oh, I haven't seen that. I don't know. So here's it's that, uh... it's that film with a uh, Hugh Jackman playing the um, playing the circus ringleader. Yeah, I know. So here's the magic mirror, which allows the person to see this or that here. Hmm. Okay, I'm looking into the out of curiosity. I want to check the original uh, story of Beauty and the Beast mm-hmm. um, from Europe. Uh, yeah, not a lot has been changed over the years. Actually, um, all of the stuff that we know from, uh, you know, the, the sisters, the guy, the the father getting lost in the storm, and then he ends up in the Beast's castle, and you know, takes a rose, and then now you you can you can take the rose, but you have to give me your daughter in return. Yeah, pretty much most of it is right here. Yeah, I it think hasn't changed part, that much. I think, I think the main reason is because when you get down to it, even back then, this was telling an actual good moral here. Don't judge a person just based off of their looks, and there can be true beauty hidden within while also teaching people. Oh, on, I'm gonna have to interrupt you because we're about to get my favorite scene in this movie. Oh boy, yep. Yeah. Here um, we go. Is it? Is it the scene where Emma, where Emma Watson apologizes to us for a singing? No, wow. no, 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 no. Yeah, <laughs> no. Instead, Rebs, the movie is gonna apologize to you by giving you a brilliant, brilliant Alan Menken song, sung by Dan Stevens. I do. Uh, for, for, uh, I, was, I was afraid that page. Of... Really, that's an apology. <laughs> they also no, no, no. They do yeah. do a good scene of also showcasing the beast, of course, letting the Belle beast go. never had a song in the original film, and the the from what I've heard, the Broadway musical fixed that. But uh, this movie has its own original song for the beast that's not related to the Broadway musical even. And uh, now we're going to get... Uh, a oh, here we go. Original... And yeah, like yeah. It, it said there once again, she has to love him back. Yep. Uh, 
I also like this detail that they, he actually apologizes to them for for failing. Yeah, uh, it's, a, at this. I mean, it's it's a nice it's a it's a small line, but it does add a nice moment of camaraderie between all of them. And it does also show how far he's come, and you know, acknowledging them as his friends yeah. in there. I appreciate yeah, that. Mm -hmm. This is Nevermore, the B Zone original song for this. In the Nevermore, yeah. yeah, in the Broadway show, he also got his own song, but I don't think it was Evermore. Nevermore. No, it was wasn't. It, no, 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 I saw. I saw a Diva's review of this movie. She said it's a different song. Um, it's a different song that happens before Bell comes in. This is the opposite. This is after Bell leaves. So they're different songs, basically. But yeah, I love this song. Mm-hmm. It's also used in the credits, isn't it? Like, as the main oh, song. Oh, sure, sure, right, sure, right, sure. Right. Have you heard Josh Groban's version of this song? Oh, boy. I think you showed me. Josh Groban's version as you play, that plays in the credits is amazing. Holy Jesus. Again, this is, again, this is the kind of movie that, despite all the problems I have with it, you will never, ever hear me call this a bad movie here. Weaker than the original, maybe, but bad, no. I still do consider it a good time. And trust me, considering the problems I do have with this movie, uh, that is no easy feat. It's one of those good... Yeah, here you go. Oh, I love this music. It's not even just the lyric. It's not even just the lyric. Like, the, 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 Alan's music is great. Oh, yeah. Whoa, Hans? Oh, I think you mean Alan. Alan. Basically, um... Basically, the song's about him. Um, I, I can never get her out of my head. Has Alan yeah. ever given us a bad soundtrack? That's, 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 that's exactly the, what the song is saying. Up until this point, as he said earlier, he never needed anybody in his life. But now, he's doomed to live the rest of his life, wondering what, what it could what could have been, basically. Yeah, like, you know... I wouldn't, it, say, you're, I wouldn't say you're in just a tower, mate. you got a whole house. Right that's exactly the problem, but still... But that's the problem, Webs. Now that he's now that he's found, uh, now that he actually found someone he loves, he's now one. Do I now I have to live the rest of my life, just not just you know yearning basically. It also probably so makes now, him so, think. So, so basically, from his perspective, he's worse than he was at the beginning. Now, <laughs> I guess he also considers all those years he wasted just wasting away in his tower when he could have maybe have tried uh, better. That's the end of the movie. No, it's okay. Oh. She conveniently hadn't exited the garden until he finished his song. Mm hmm It's a very big garden. Well, the, the garden's kind of made like a maze, so yeah, it actually does kind of make... Um, like, I can imagine Belle trying to run away. Oh my god, why did you have to build your garden like a maze? It's taking me forever just to leave the bloody thing. I mean, it has a lovely exit song, but still... So now he's going to an asylum? Well, yeah. that's what Gaston's sending him off to, like in the Disney version. Oh. Well, well, technically this is also a Disney version, Jova. But, yeah. Well, I'm sorry, the uh, animated. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 Pedro, this is the company... Well, Pedro, Disney is the company that had, that had the beginning of Pirates of the Caribbean free hanging children. <laughs> That is true. I don't know even. Uh, uh, we at Disney only do family-friendly films. Movie starts with with children being hanged. Like, hey, but hey, what? don't but wait, wait, wait! Don't you see? It's family-friendly. It's adults and kids together suffering the crimes of piracy. Oh, of course, that makes sense. Would you be surprised if Disney used that as an excuse? I don't even mind it if it was just pointless. It's just me. It's just being mean for the sake of being mean. I, I get the point of it. It was to show how the East India Trading Company were really letting the power get to their heads and everything, but yeah. Oh boy. Um, um, could you maybe could you maybe hold it a bit higher for the people in the back? I don't think. They saw it. <laughs> <laughs> that, I guess that, they probably the went. Oh my god, the person in front of me is shocked. I should act shocked too. It's, it's okay. It's... Gaston's got it covered. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. See, don't, don't worry, Dwebs. Uh, Gaston will do it for her. Yeah, that's what, what I think I never understood. That's what I think I never understood. 
Yeah, the people at the front can see something, but the people further back are like, wait, what are they reacting Oh to? my god, she's a furry. She, she actually cares for him. <laughs> she's into that? God have mercy on her soul. <laughs> Hey, I never said that. I was just saying he's gentle and kind of and then. That doesn't imply that I'm in love with him. Lady, this be... is the 15th century. Uh, saying that might as well mean that you're bed with him. Um, Remember, Gaston has a bit of an with... ego, Pedro. And it's, it's easily all bruised. with him wanting to uh, marry her. And... Well, 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 I'll talk about from the perspective of them. Like, uh... Uh, like she just said, he's he's gentle and kind. That there you go. You, women are allowed to compliment a man without necessarily being in love with them. That man, it's like that's not like uh, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. I guess this is another time period thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, was it? I well, mean, okay, I don't know. Okay, I'm okay, just okay, 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 okay. Is it okay? Don't get me wrong. I understand different time crap. I've been preaching it for like f ten minutes earlier. It's just that. Okay, I'm sure even back then there were, you know, a, a man and a woman just being friends at some point, wasn't there? Um... Well, yes, but it was also a case where if you showed certain bouts of enthusiasm, or if you so much as pecked another on the cheek, you were considered man and wife, lest you be drawn and quartered. I mean, the friends, I mean... Uh, again, not an historian, but I get the feeling the friend zone probably was already a thing back then. So, yeah, in this version, it's not just the men going after the beast, but the women are participating, oh. too. In fact, in fact, Shiro, now that I think about it, that's kind of LeFou's big uh, dilemma in this movie. The fact that he's permanently stuck in the friend zone. I don't oh, think no. About it. <laughs> oh, you think, LeFou? <laughs> not nice, nice. Like, uh... Yeah. That's the... <laughs> That's basically, basically, there you go, Joe, there you go, Jesse. LeFou is starting to realize, hmm, maybe, maybe this... this guy isn't all that, he says. He that, 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 it's like I said, that's that. kind of, that's, that's what I said, uh, uh, this is kind of LeFou's arc, the fact that he's constantly, he, 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 eventually he decides, you know what, I need to love myself best. I deserve better than this guy. I basically. think a better way to describe LeFou's arc is realizing, holy cow, my crush is flipping crazy. Yeah. You know what? I can do better. He basically made the decision that Squall should have been Final Fantasy VIII. You know what? I can do better than this. Good for you. I deserve better. Yeah, hell, so Sophie is a better match for me than this girl. At least Sophie isn't insane. <laughs> <laughs> Again, yeah, that's the she thing. She likes to sing about trains, but she's a good person. But that's the thing. A lot of people remember Selfie as the overreactive, crazy one, but no, if anything, she's the more grounded one. And most should be the ideal what TV tropes would call oh, 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 ship oh, oh. candidates. Cogsworth, Cogsworth, it's now. You should say it. You shall not, not pass! pass. <laughs> yeah, it's so obvious. New line for a bit. Yes, I figured it out. I'm officially well, a Disney protagonist. My mother well, died. Not, well, even if they do for a fit, they wouldn't be able to do anything. The, wor the words you shall not pass are not copyrighted. People are allowed to say those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People have tried to copyright stupider. I do like that little thing how, how Maurice realizes that maybe he was trying to be a bit too protective of her as well. Which actually oh, no, does fit in with one of the themes. No, I must stay here. I'm still repenting for Wild Wild West. Uh, where are you referencing specifically, Shirai? Um, just various things. Well, I like thought, uh, the Fine Brothers copywriting the word React. <laughs> that one. That's one of them. <laughs> also, the uh, recent. Um, it's it's a little. Uh, too much to explain, but the recent uh, 100 Days of Minecraft nonsense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a really morbid joke coming up in a little bit that I, I, I actually I, got I, a bit of a laugh out of me. I'd also like to mention something, by the way. You know, yeah. we already established a change from the original animated film uh, where when the time limit 
ends, they die. They don't just become, uh, they all die, right? Mm -hmm. As a result, Beast's moment here actually makes even more sense than it does in the original film. Because in the original film, he's just, you know, even though everybody's in danger, he's just, ah, it doesn't matter. Let them come in and kill everybody. Who cares anymore? I don't, I don't have, my, I don't have barrels, so I don't give a crap. But in here, it actually does make more sense for him to actually say that because, well, we're we're literally going to die in a couple hours anyway at this point. So, should we even bother? So it actually does make a bit more sense here for him to just give up like that, you know? Whereas in the original, he just completely <gasps> gives up. Old oh, snap, you called her a grandmother. You called the lady old. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> are they going to start turning on Gaston at this point? Because it's like, wait a minute, you told us all lies. You'll see. Damn. Oh! Ow. Harpsichords can be pretty heavy. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, 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 there you go. <laughs> That's truly <laughs> what a hero would do. Abandon his friend. <laughs> why not? Well, well Joe, but why, why not? Well, the same logic uh, Reed Richard used in Van Forstick. <laughs> so basically, it's Josh Gad So basically, LeFou, you bet on the wrong horse. Whoops. Basically. <laughs> yeah, that dress was rubbish anyway. That <laughs> feels needlessly pointless. I, well, that, it, that, it, that it admitting, does, yeah, our dress wasn't very good, so let's just does, throw it, it away. It, it, it does bring up a good question, though. <laughs> Isn't that, that again? I know me. I'm, I have little to no knowledge about this, these things, so by all means, correct me. Isn't that sort of uh, dress usually wore just on its own with nothing underneath, or at the very least just underwear underneath? Yes. Uh, because because how the hell does she have another completely different dress under that? Uh, uh she's right? now Clark Kent. Um, so? some dresses do have under layers that are a separate thing. But that implies well, that she's right. in her underwear then. That's the thing. She and there's under also uh. That's the thing she wrote. I'm not, I don't mean just under layers or underwear or whatever. I mean, she has a completely st uh, different dress made specifically for street. Under uh, I don't know. Yeah, oh, I don't know, look man. at that. She helped them find <laughs> their inner beauty. Oh, hold on. See? Go, be free. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but yeah, seriously though, Shuri, I guess the implications are that Emma Watson's now in her underwear for anyway, reasons. Anyway, that was the outfit she had under that yellow dress somehow. Like, yeah, that, that had... isn't like an underlayer, oh, that's like God, a, a that dress is, dress. That is boiling hot. Ow! Well, I am a teapot. What, in what other ways could I possibly attack someone? Oh, here we go, here we go. Go ahead. Also, notice how it's... that guy was a bit. Yeah, there you go. Oh. There you go. Uh, there you go. There's a uh, robot. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. Aww, exactly. Relationship <laughs> advice. So, um, so I'm a teacup. To that realization with by having a conversation with a teacup. Yeah, that, that's basically. Well, he, he already I... started to realize it, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, it, it was. Like, it really was. Like, he was already... Remember, he called him Monster even during that song earlier. So, so basically, this is... You know what? Yeah, you're right, Mrs. Potts. I can do better. Ooh! You know, oh, wow, the... You know, the terrible... Oh, shit, the piano's packing. <laughs> like... Harpsichord, but yeah. Oh, hey, yeah, Agatha. Yeah, Bye, Agatha. Get! Go! You know, the sad thing is what we learned later about that harpsichord when he shot off his keys, but I'll talk about that later. Mm hmm. Okay, now it's time for the final battle between Gaston and the Beast. Like I said, I actually really enjoyed. Uh, I actually enjoy the fact that they actually do make the beast's reluctance to even do anything actually be a lot better in this one because, like I said, the fact that they're literally uh, both him and his friends oh, are about to die. Oh, 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 oh. Also, you gotta love that how he claims that Bell sent him. 
<laughs> just to drive. Did him. he do that in the original too? Or no, 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 no he they're, didn't. They're just, no, they're just making an even bigger dick. Which, well, it's Gaston, so. And well, he yeah. literally just shot the beast, but it's okay. The beast can take a full bullet, I guess. Well, to be fair, this was also a thing, kind of, in the original. Sorry, in in the in the, in the animated one. Sorry. Thanks, Bell. <laughs> wow, I'm gonna make you marry yeah. me, and then I'm gonna hang the guy who you claimed was good on our wall. That won't traumatize You're you at all. You're not really good with women or men, are you? No, I don't think he's good with anything, Shuri. Um, it's well, 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 himself. Oh, there you go. See, 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 see. Now that 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 thing that she's wearing right now, and now that would have been fine to have under the yellow dress. I like, kind mm. of maybe. Okay, uh, I just wonder what what is that other second layer that she had? That... Why? Why did she even yeah. bother to throwing off the yellow dress? Like again, girl, it's cold here. More layers are better. Because it, because it looks cool on camera to do that, Jova. Also, isn't the, this dress just as long as that one? No, 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 no. no, it, no it's, it's actually shorter. shorter. Again, it's a dress made of. It's hard to tell because the camera's moving so quickly. It looks more like an undergarment dress more than anything. I, there you go. See, see here, you go. like um. And con considering that thing that I said earlier, it, it, it now it makes even more sense that the beast would actually bother to fight back now because even if he gets to spend even one more minute with Bell, that by itself is a good enough reason for him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, the fact that uh, you actually again in hindsight, actually it is a good. I actually do like the fact that they made it so that they don't just become, they don't just. Uh, lose the right to be human uh, at all like they actually die at the end of the of the because at the because remember Jovi, it's also one of those cases Jova, where it is more faithful to the original story because in the original story for those who don't know what what the beast tells beauty it was sorry bell um is that okay you can go see your father but you have to come back in three days otherwise i will die if you don't come back and he actually does die um when she doesn't come back in three days so to so yeah. actually again so it does actually make it more faithful to the to the, the source material and it does make this little uh, emo beast thing uh actually make more sense that is kind of a thing honestly the whole gaston thing is a step that the disney version added to admittedly raise some stakes and give more of a villain but yeah in the actual original story the beast is literally just on a ticking clock here so yeah anyway so let's see how the fight between him and gaston ends Bang. Fooled you. So, okay. So how is Gaston going to die? Well, in the original, he pretty much pushed the beast to the point where he got knocked off. In this version... The bridge breaks and he falls down. He is literally well, too... He's literally too dumb to live. Like, dude, m shoot him, yes, but don't do it on the obviously crumbling bridge. It's just so lame compared to his original death. This is as bad as the Super Shredder's death in the second Turtles movie. Mm, I know. I also prefer this over the Super Shredder's death, to be honest with again, you. Again, again, again. I mean, I feel like, okay, for as much problems as Lion King 2019 did, at least it still kept the epic final showdown with Scar. Here, it's literally Gaston being a dumbass. Does Scar still die by the hyenas rebelling? Yeah, 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 he does, but the way that they have the epic fight between him and Simba is pretty cool in the 2019 version, I won't lie. In the original, uh, in the original source material, the beast actually does die, uh, but it's uh, but he gets revived magically by Belt uh, saying that he that she loves him. Actually, that's another um, thing. In this version, the beast is legit dead. Like, and the final yeah, yeah. and the final petal from the rose has fallen. We're actually about that's to why, see no, what happens. That's, that, that's why I was saying this is more faithful to the source material. Anyway, anyway, this is a really dark scene to have in, in the what's supposed to be a movie for kids. Also, I think it's yeah, it's here. I yeah, think. yeah. No. That's what I said. This is up. There you go. About. And now Dress prepares up. Now we see all of them literally freeze to death. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Bill Cotton literally shows us close in detail. Oh, it, how, it, they, it. how these characters. Later, here's the, the dog. Even the here. dog. 
Like, oh my god, that just... And the god died. Jesus wow. Christ. <laughs> I remember, I almost actually laughed at that at the time, because that, like, that was, that, that was completely out of nowhere for me. I will, I will, gi- I will give Bill and the writers uh, credit for having the balls to put a scene like this in a kid's movie. <laughs> Oh, no, no, like, I, I love, I love this, this scene. One. Oh my god, this one! Jesus oh, Christ, the oh, kid! I swear, for a whole moment when I first watched it, I was, oh my god, they're gonna have a break too. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, no, this god. scene is genuinely really good. Yeah. <laughs> Just accept death and move on. It's too early for this. <laughs> Well, at least he goes out graciously. The music does not help. God damn. Uh, dear Lord. Uh, <laughs> okay, Lord. Lord. And that's the end of the movie, everyone. <laughs> like, uh, every, uh, everybody oh. dies. <laughs> well, except Bell. Again, this is kind of a throwback to it. Okay. Here we go now. Um, excuse me, Belle, you've been sitting over his corpse for five minutes. I don't think he's coming back. Oh, hello there, hooded woman. You look familiar. So, remember how I mentioned that Agatha's a dick? Yes. Then I guess you could have just done this the whole time. She's the sorceress from the original tale. (laughs) So, Agatha... Now that the man has literally died because of the course you put on him, you want to maybe cut him a break now? Also, well, at- technically it was Gaston that killed him, not the curse itself. Well, he you know, the, the curse kind of led to this happening, essentially. And also, hey, Agatha, why the hell didn't you stand up for Maurice when, you know, <laughs> people were going to send him off to the asylum unless you spoke up in his defense? Like I said, the sorceress in this version is a dick. She is. She's basically a puppet. She's basically the puppet's master, basically doing the, all of this for her own amusement. It's basically. like, well, you know, you all put on a good show all for right. me. You can live now. All right, I will give it credit. Dan Stevens definitely looks like a much better human beast than whatever the fuck the animators drew for for this scene. Yeah, <laughs> like, he was high. Like, yeah. I'm not even kidding. I generally believe Beast look look better as a beast than he does a human. <laughs> that's kind I'm, of. I'm pretty sure that's the general that, consensus for that, the anime. Is, is that why they turned him back into a beast in those uh, directed? Yes, well, that's exactly. What well, those movies are intraquels, Yeah. So. Well, they were, take, well, they were but look at this uh, they, now. They, 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 they take place. In between the moment where they're having fun in the winter. Basically. But look at this now. It also repairs the castle to its former glory and even repairs stuff like the bridge that Gaston fell off of. So does this mean that this also... Well, that's what happens in the original. That's kind of what always happens in these, in all for pretty much all versions anyway. Well, there wasn't the whole disrepair thing, but yeah, I wonder though. Will that clean up Gaston's corpse? Hey, or is... the dog is alive! Hey! Oh, he don't and... even pee on this guy. <laughs> How lovely. <laughs> Oh, Unfortunately, yeah, remember how he was shooting keys out? Those were his teeth. (laughs) Hey, Gandalf. We're just bench forever. So, uh... So, uh, yeah. yeah, And now we've got Ian McKellen and Gregor. I wonder if internally they were thinking, "Ha, ah, who's gonna be in the be- who's gonna be in the better oh, 2019 Lynette. film? Me with Doctor Sleep or you with Cats?" Well, <laughs> I think we know who won that wager. Uh, yeah, let's put that out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey there, Emma Thompson. You're a real boy!
boy. Wait a minute. Uh, we're, Pinocchio. Pin- we're not doing a Pinocchio. Wrong movie. Well, we're, we're, the Pinocchio remake will come this year, Joe. And here's oh. another thing. Now that the curse is lifted, the people remember them now. I do. Like the sorceress who suddenly decided, you know what, I was being a bit of a dick. Yeah, seriously, screw you, Agatha. You separated look, people. Look. Uh-oh. Look, uh, look. I was bored and I just needed a fairy tale to happen for my own amusement, okay? You separated people from their own families! Also, Ian McKellen has his own wife, too. You almost murdered a child and a dog. Well, I am a god, so what I say goes. (laughs) Are you a god, or are you just a prankster mistress, I wonder? Well, well, Jova, considering everything, she's basically a volunteer in purpose, she's basically a god. Oh god, this is a lot of people. Yeah, she can sing fantastically, too. Again, everybody in this movie can sing except for that one elephant in this room. <laughs> yeah, again, it's, it's one of the uh, title characters. Oh. <laughs> It'd be like if you had a Cats movie, one of the cats couldn't sing. Uh, hold on. If I remember correctly, aren't we going to get a scene with... Uh... Interesting dance we got in the hands doing the one potato, two potato. I, I actually like this line here from Bell, actually. In a moment. That could be a great title for a story. I, 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 I. <laughs> Have you ever thought about growing a beard? You know, just to, um,. I don't know. So, so, okay, okay. You heard it here, uh, right there, folks. Bell as a thing for guys with beards. That, or I guess she prefers him with more hair on his face. You know. It is now officially canon. <laughs> and yes, LeFou found love. Sure, why not? Might as well. Again, he is really, truly accepting in this time period. <laughs> well, apparently, apparently that bit got a lot of flack for queer baiting. Well, it's because it's a quick blink and you'll miss it scene, you know. That's not what queer baiting is. <laughs> wait, wait, queer baiting? Oh, keep... no, 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 that's not queer baiting, Dwibs. You... No, 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 Dwibs didn't say it was, but he yeah, said other who... people were saying it was, but that's yeah. not what queer baiting is. Allow me again. Uh, you keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. I don't think I don't think it means what you think it means. But anyway, yeah. Apparently, uh, apparently, at least according to the Wikipedia quote, it says here many felt it was used as a way of just teasing LGBT viewers without providing adequate representation. With them, with, with the whole it's just three seconds at the end. Uh, but the movie wasn't advertised as having any queer involvement, it's just something that happened to be in the movie. Actually, sure, they... to be fair, the whole LeFou being gay thing was actually very advertised in pre-release of the movie, so there is unfortunately that caveat that it was incredibly- but he got a relationship at the end, though. Which... Oh, oh yes, 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 he got a relationship. I think people's complaints is like, was that the culmination of that relationship is literally a blink and you'll miss it scene. Mm-hmm. But they never promised anything is oh, what uh, I'm uh, trying uh, to the say. At the very least, I've heard it's not bad as what stuff like Voltron. Oh, so anyway. yeah, it is nowhere near that bad. <laughs> uh, again, I feel sorry for the guy that he's... And yeah, Audra McDonald, she is a fantastic singer, and I wish she'd gotten to sing even more in this movie. Stick, uh, stick around, everybody, because during the credits, uh, we're going to hear uh, Josh Groban's version of Evermore, which is... Oh, hey, brilliant. Agatha! Dick! <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. That that sorceress was an absolute dick in this Nathan Ma- Nathan Mac has chip. Yeah, that, and that of course. Been inter- Ian that, 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 that should have been an interesting role. Hey, kid, you want to come in and this movie where you show up for like 10 seconds? 
Yes, please. It's okay, though. You'll get to voice... I'll pay my college tuition. You'll get to voice a lot. And hello, <laughs> Emma Thompson, also known as uh, Trelawney. Can I get my final thoughts first? Uh, go ahead. Um, it's perfect. It's fine. I mean, it's not, it's not the best Disney um, remake I've seen, but it's not the worst. I mean, everything is... Okay, most of it is perfectly solid. You know, the, the sets are all really good. Uh, but it's very accurate to the uh, time that it's set in, whenever it really was. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the acting all around is very solid. Mm -hmm. And um, the singing is mostly very solid. Again, Ian McGregor and Ian McKellen oh, no, and Audra McDonald and Danny Withers and Luke Evans and Josh Gad, they all, and Emma Thompson, they can all sing good. Oh, and also the kid playing Chip can sing good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and no, by the way, again, the I'm sorry, go ahead. But, but unfor unfortunately, um, there are a couple of issues. Like, again, seriously, that bloody French can't understand their own language joke. That's just... Mm-hmm. Just so dumb. It does feel and, weird, uh, yeah, in a movie that is trying I mean, to be that, supposed to be like more if, accurate. Yeah, it's I mean, that, 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 that'd be like if I wrote a joke where Pedro couldn't understand a Portuguese word. And by the way, this is uh, Celine Dion who performed the pop version of Beauty and the Beast in the original film, performing the pop version of A Moment Last Forever. Weird, didn't so Celine Dion also do like something for the original Beauty and the Beast film now that I think about it? I, ju I just said, she did the pop version of Beauty and the Beast, the one that plays uh, in the credits. Yeah. Also, um, also, I mean, Emma Watson, I mean, she's fine acting in the movie, but um, yeah, honestly, I think, it, I think it would have been better if you just got someone who could sound like her but do better singing just to dub her over because the auto tune is just no yeah like mm -hmm. it's, it's... I mean, it kind of clash it, it really clashes with a film like this that's the thing auto tune <laughs> is supposed to make her sound better but when even the auto tune sucks all right no um, never mind um now it's now we're actually hearing Celine Dion sorry i completely yeah, hey, I was about uh, to or, say. Or is this, or, no, 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 sorry, sorry. This is oh god, I com sorry, I'm completely screwed over right now. Like now, this is um, I think it's Audra McDonald right now. If I remember correctly, um, let me double check. Let me double check real quick. Go ahead, let's continue. And yeah, again, you know, there are those couple of little, uh, little weird bits where Gaston just kind of kills himself because he's dumb. <laughs> um, but overall, it's it's fine. It's, oh. I don't think it's I don't think it's something I remember in uh, from now, but it's not something that's gonna stick in my mind to be horrific either. All right, so, I'm checking the sound. Sorry, that, I guess. All right, I'm checking the soundtrack right now. Um, the, the 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 pop version of how of how does a moment last forever is performed from Ashley Young, like I said. This version of Beauty and the Beast that we're hearing right now is performed by Ariana Grande. Ah. I love Ariana Grande. After, after, uh, stick around, everybody, again, because after this song is over, we're gonna hear Josh Groban performing Evermore, and it's amazing. Uh, Shiro, you wanna go next, I guess? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, I also agree. It's uh, it's it's a good movie. Like it, it's uh, pretty uh, well, it's leaning more on the. The, uh, the positive side is to being in the middle of the road. Mm. I like that they explain some things better, like the intro. Uh, it was nice uh, to get some little extra things um, to scenes that were already there, you know, like the fact that uh, you pointed out that uh, they were bonding over a mutual love of reading, which I don't think was in the original, or at the no, very wasn't least wasn't spoke about. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's good. Mm -hmm. What happens in the original Shira is that the Beast gives her the entire library for her to use. But yeah. he, ne he never actually does any reading in that movie, you know? Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's actually a better version of that. Like, instead of having the whole library thing, have them bon talk about their books, the books that they like. There you go. That's a much mm -hmm. better idea than the library thing from the original. Yeah. Um, this... Um... I mean, the movie looks great. The costumes are great for the most part. The only one I don't really care for is, again, the dress. It's just too plain compared to how how grand it's supposed to be. And I'm not expecting it to be exactly the same, but it just it just kind of stands out compared to the rest of 
the rest of the costumes in the movie. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. The music is really good. The the new songs are fantastic, and the adaptations um, visually uh, for the uh, existing songs were also fantastic. Oh, speak again. Of the it, songs. It, it, mm-hmm. yeah. Also good to get uh, Belle's um, mother's um, story as well. As opposed mm-hmm. to her just being okay, Disney princess, you gotta have a dead parent. And her father being, you know, much more than an oaf was also good. Yeah. Uh, some great scenes in this movie, uh, particularly the VR guest. Oh. Josh Groban's version. I I've never heard of this, uh, Josh. Josh Groban is an amazing singer. Just, just go to YouTube and check Josh Groban Bevo. The affairs a singer. No, no, no. He's a pop singer. Like, But he's, he's a, he has an amazing voice. Yes. You're saying, Shiroi? Uh, just wait till we get to the chorus. Hold on. Yeah, I'll, I'll hold up till after the first chorus. All right. Yeah, right after this. Oh. <sighs> I could hear this man sing for hours. The thing, I mean, he's the not... singing's not that different from the one in the actual film. I know this. It's just that, uh, you know, Josh Groban is uh, a, a veteran of this kind of crap. Like, he's, he can sing something like this in his sleep. And give him kudos, <laughs> he can sing multiple different genres, too. He's normally a pop singer, but here he is doing one with a, clearly a classical musical backdrop. He also sang, uh, He also has his own version of The Prayer, which is that ballad. Uh, oh, from, yeah, The um, Prayer. Quest for Camelot. AKA yeah. probably mm-hmm. the one thing you will forever remember from that movie because the prayer was that one song that everyone, and I do mean everyone, sang. Like, that may be one of the few songs that has more recognition than Let It Go in its prime, mind you. It's one of those. Okay, yeah. All right, she was to inspire me. Yeah, okay, go ahead, sure, continue. I think that's about it. Yeah, but the the scene where everybody dies temporarily, that that's a great scene. And you also mentioned um, the Be Our Guest scene. Yes, no, no, also great. Um, I, I didn't like it the first time around. Like, it, it felt like it went on for a little too long, but watching this, uh, this is the second time I've seen this movie. It, no, no, it wasn't as, uh, it, it wasn't as too much... Of a time-consuming thing as I originally thought, uh, but no, it, it it's good. Mm. Um, the sets look great. Uh, the time period stuff is uh, it's a little sketchy, can all things considered. Yeah, because you know there's nothing wrong with um, having um, a diverse cast in some historical. Um, in you know in, in adaptations of his, historical media the problem is when you have something where you know the culture and such are a part of the story even just a little bit then you're going to run into a few issues like for example as much as um people praise hamilton because the idea behind it was to we'll tell this old story but with the America we know today, which unfortunately resulted in some backlash because you had black people playing slave owners. So that that, that was that was kind of a thing. <laughs> the, uh, but yeah, the, the, sometimes you should probably leave the cast, you know, suitable for the time period, I like, guess. Okay, it's one, it's one of those when where... it comes to Hamilton, I can get what they were doing with that. They were, I feel like that was part of the point, you know, show the more rugged architecture of it. Whereas again, this movie mm-hmm. is basically just trying to play it straight up like this. And I'll say this, in a, Beauty and the Beast is technically a story against discrimination. That said, it's kind of weird that people are accepting of black folk and gay folk, but... They're not accepting of a guy who looks and talks a bit differently. Huh. Yeah, it, it doesn't make sense at all. It's one of those cases where, again, it's there because, in, 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 like, the, the, the like, portray the time period as it was. 
Okay, if you and as long as you specifically state the time period where something is stated, you don't have to worry about backlash because if someone tries to be stupid and say you shouldn't do this, you can just say, uh, "Don't you know any history?" and you'll make that person look like an idiot. That said, that said, um, what they could have done was again do like what the 1997 version of Disney Sleep, sorry, what 1997 of Disney Cinderella did, and have it be played off like an adaptation of a Broadway show, essentially, so that oh, it's it, it's shot in a way where you can get okay, I'm sort of okay with this diverse cast because you know they're not paying that much mind to the setting per se, whereas this one, no, they clearly were paying in mind to the setting. Hell, they even reference real life stuff like the bubonic plague and everything, so... Yeah. Oh, um, I, I should have mentioned this um, earlier during the film. In terms of who they considered for, you know, the Beauty and the Beast in this movie before they cast the actors, they did. Yeah. Um, originally, they did approach Ryan Gosling to play the Beast, but he was too busy with La La Land. And they also oh. had in mind... Um, Robert Pattinson, Taron Egerton, and, uh, <laughs> Robert Pattinson as the Beast, <laughs> and uh, and and a bit oddly Josh Brolin, but he turned it down because he thought he was too old for them. Yeah, like that. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> what are you talking what? about? Can you imagine the amount of Thanos memes we would have gotten out of this movie? Yeah, besides, I mean. I mean, I mean, hell, if it were Josh Brolin, you could probably have you probably have him in prosthetics. You, you don't even need CGI for him to be the beast there. <laughs> and as for um, <laughs> and as for um, as for uh, Bell, yeah, um, before they cast Emma Watson, okay, and um, they had uh, they had in mind uh, Amanda Seyfried, better, Billy Collins, better, Emmy Rossum, and. Uh, Kristen Stewart. <gasps> oh, so you're saying that they had Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart in my <laughs> Breathe, Jova. Yeah, Jova, got, gotta breathe. Uh, okay, you know what? Again, I'll say it before and I'll say it again. Here, let me just get... I want to see that version. No, <laughs> seriously, I'm being deprived of something. Bill Condon would basically be directing Twilight again. That's not what I'm saying, though. Like, uh, that's the thing. Okay, well, as I say this, I said it before, but I'll say it again. And, and as I say this, I'm going to quickly get behind Shiro for protection. There you go. Uh, <laughs> okay. Like, I, uh, yes, yes, you're right. Uh, like, Kristen Stewart is just your average girl you meet at the mall. That's it. <laughs> why? Why do Hollywood keep putting her in roles like, uh, you know, like uh, Ferris of the Mall, or in this case, Beauty? Oh, oh my God! Can you imagine if Kristen Stewart had gotten this role? Then she could have boasted that she got to be both Snow White and Beauty from Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <sighs> again, again, again. I kind of do want to... A sick part of me does kind of want to see a version that had Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart. I, I, I kind of do want to see that. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's just... I'm, so, I'm sorry, but... Uh, Kristen Stewart, fairer than Charlize Theron? No. Okay, no. okay, okay. I'll say this. No. Kristen Stewart... <laughs> no. Okay, okay, okay. I'll say this. Kristen Stewart is probably the one choice that I would probably take Emma Watson over for Belle. If only... I don't know if Kristen can sing, but her acting is all kinds of no. Yeah. And going off of how badly the 2019 Charlie's Angels film did, eh, Twilight wasn't exactly a fluke, it seems. No, 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 no. That's not even just. You don't even have to bring up that movie. Like, uh, like she's unlike Robert Pattinson, who actually is a good actor. Kristen is not a good actress at all. She just had she had the fortune luck of being in Twilight, but that was it. That was her fifteen minutes of fame. Basically. Ironically, she blames Twilight for now having people see her as more a bland and dull actress. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, okay. I that was the. That was pretty much it from me, though. It's a it's a good movie. All mm -hmm. right, I'll go next. Yeah, I like this movie, warts and all. Yes, it does have issues, and yes, I did spend a good point pointing out some logical fallacies here again. Inclusion be nice here and there, but okay. It's if 
Of course, mostly because this story is a story that we all know, so there's not that much point in commentating on the story itself. Everybody knows this story and how it ends. You Although know? you'd be amazed at how many people can screw it up still. You know, like the... Oh, I, 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 no, I, get, I get that, Joby. said from our perspective as commentators, there's not that much to commentate. That's just not obvious because we everybody knows why this story is good and why it's a tale as... Everybody knows why this is a tale as old as time. And, you know, because it's, it's, it's... I mean, everybody knows it, you know? Like, even though I still consider the original overall a better movie, I feel like this was actually mm -hmm. a valiant effort and one that does succeed in a lot of ways still in being superior to the original. Maybe not as a whole, but still very good. I love some of the new additions they make. Flushing out Maurice's character or some of the new scenes they add. Their take on Be Our Guest is absolutely fantastic here and of course that it seems like them literally all dying are so heartbreaking and again does so is sort of their way to pay homage to how the beast does originally die in the fairy tale as well it's not the beast mm -hmm. who dies if the curse doesn't work itself out but everyone else who does and again it is nice how they do try to flesh out his character here and there now there are still some hiccups here or, in Emma Watson's cases, incredible landmines that I have to tiptoe around because, goddamn, girl can act, but it really does feel like they added her just for star power, because, well, gee, guys, tell me Disney wouldn't have wanted the Hermione to be in their own film. <laughs> Again. You know, who, could, you know who, could, who would have been a better Belle, by the way, since we were talking about La La Land before? Uh, Emma, Emma Stone. Uh, I thought you were going to say Amanda Seyfried, but yeah, Emma Stone, too. There you go. Emma Stone would have been a fantastic Belle. There well, you go. There's, I, your, I, I, there's your casting right there. Well, unfortunately, she's too busy uh, trying to take lessons from Glenn Close as she is now Cruella. I get that, but Emma Stone is a shoo-in. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Maybe she was too busy at the time. Who knows? But, oh, well. uh, yeah, again, Emma Watson is unfortunately that elephant in the room here. She is the biggest problem with this movie here. For as much as I talk about, oh, issues of double standards or this and that, those are, like, technically background elements. Yes, there are some pretty huge implications that do still lay issues with the film, but actually looking at the film's forefront, that's unfortunately Emma Watson here. You need to sing good to carry a musical forward here. Otherwise, dub her over, give her better singing lessons, and have her only come out until she's, you know, decent enough. But yeah, couldn't unfortunately, what they gave they was not the best. Eh? Couldn't they find Emma her own Brad Kane equivalent? For those who don't know, Scott Weinger, who's, of course, one role he's known for is playing Aladdin in every single time he's shown up in any Disney media ever. <laughs> um... Scott Langer doesn't actually sing in the original film. Instead, no. it's uh, it's this other guy called Brad Kane. You can see the behind-the-scenes videos from the Blu-ray and DVDs to to, to see for yourself. Um, and and as Jasmine's the same thing. Uh, Lea Salonga does the singing voice of Jasmine. Um, oh yeah, Disney are great at founding soundalikes, not only just for voice acting, but for sounding like a person while singing yeah. as well. Yeah, Lea Salonga also did the singing voice of of Mulan instead of Ming Na. Um, so, couldn't you find someone who could sing instead of Emma? I don't know. I mean, could, I mean, I mean surely you could have done a an Aladdin, pulled an Aladdin, and found someone who can sing who sounds convincingly like Emma Watson. It shouldn't be that hard. I mean, I guess they did. Did they think that somebody singing good would have sounded unlike Emma Watson? I'm joking, but still, though. Mm. It is weird. Aside from Emma Watson, everyone sings fantastically in this movie here. I love the renditions of the songs and this and that here. There are some things that don't carry over to the non-live action version. One of the issues is I do feel like they don't know what to do with Gaston half the time until they finally do get an idea here. And while they eventually do gather that, I really don't like how Gaston's death is way more anticlimactic in this version here. 
I mean, it's followed up by a fantastic scene still. Oh, and like I said, the sorceress is an absolute bastard in this movie. Like, Mm -hmm. again, it kind of sucks that not only did she punish a guy for not accepting a rose from his own garden, but for something that the movie itself says was more his father's fault for turning him like that, instead of just, I don't know, giving him an education lesson. Yeah, like, I feel they maybe should have thought a bit more when writing the sorceress in this movie. Again, for as much issue as I have with that, though, it still does not part how much I do love the music, how much I do like a lot of the scenes here and there, and how the casting and acting are very, very phenomenal here and there. So, overall, at the end of the day, it's definitely a live-action film that had the right idea of how to go about things, you know. Actually, it it does feel like it is genuinely trying to improve in every way, shape, or form here and there. They don't always land a hit, but this movie as a whole is certainly not a miss. (laughs) Pedro. So, uh, maybe it's a hit-miss? Or a miss? Or a... I, I, I don't know. Go on, Pedro. Close us out with your final thoughts. Um, well, like I said, yeah, much like Jova said, yeah, I think the movie, despite not buying, being by no means perfect, um, it's fine. I mean, I, I still enjoy it uh, fine enough. Obviously, it doesn't replace the original, but as an alternate version, I'm not a- opposed to it, to be honest with you. Like, it's fine for what it is. And it does, and t- unlike other unlike other remakes, it actually does put its own, it actually does enough to, you know, put its own spin on things. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, it, so, it does a proper and, and like job. I said, and, 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 like, and, and like I said, if this movie didn't exist, we wouldn't have Evermore. And I don't really want to live in that timeline. <laughs> um... Uh, so yeah, just for that, I'm okay with this movie existing. Um, it's fine. It does have some really good ideas. Um, like I said, I personally don't really care much to think about the whole, you know, implications thing, because like I said, like when it comes to, I mean, mean, this story has been told over and over and over in millions of versions. And these implications have always been there because that's just how the story works. And again, you have to consider the time it was the original was originally created in in uh, the I think the 16th century. I think that Beauty and Beast was there. But uh, the point is, what it, you have to understand that this was a this story was as very very old roots. And again, like I said, as long as you just don't think about that and just try to enjoy the story on its own, based on its themes and characters, it's fine, you know. Um, yes, there's some impli- yes, there's, there's the implications here and there, but considering the time that the story originates from, I think it's I think you can at the very least give it a pass because um, it was made in a like if this story was written today for the first time, it would have been radically different anyway. So I don't think there's much there's not really much point in in trying to lambast the original writers of the original tale because you know they're they're dead at this point and they're not here to defend that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's so that my I would argue it's just best to just enjoy the movie and just don't think about that. There's no point in it. It's just a it's just a you it's just a it, you're just you're just gonna arrive at a, at a brick wall. You're not gonna get anywhere, basically. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy it, and and I like the new ideas that they put up. When in terms of you know like the Shiro said, I really like the the new ways they have in terms of character development, like the, both like reading and the fact that Beast shows what happened to her mom. Uh, uh, with the, with the, with his magic book and things, so again they they go out of their way to give them uh, some really good reasons for them to bond over. So it's really good. I was and and yeah, the the score is fan- the soundtrack is fantastic. And seriously, get the soundtrack for this movie. The soundtrack is a genuine triumph. Mm-hmm. Um, and the movie looks really good visually. Bill Condon, is, again, Bill Condon is a good director. I really do like how this movie looks visually. Um. So yeah. So what the hell happened with Breaking Dawn? <laughs> Honestly, this Breaking Dawn's big problem to me is not so much the writing. So sorry, it's not, it's not so much the directing. It's more so the writing. I mean, visually, the movie looks okay. Uh, I don't know. I, I, mean, thought, I thought the sets were pretty. 
Well, well, here's the thing. Maybe Bill was all like, oh my god, I have to do Twilight now. Fine, whatever. I'll phone it in and put the real effort in something else because it's not like anybody's gonna care. To be fair, Dribs, <laughs> like, to be fair, Dribs, like we've mentioned, Twilight is kind of like that one get out of jail free card. It's like, okay, you're making something based off of Twilight here. You can do your best, well, but chances are it won't be remembered in the future for being a good thing. Well, I mean, when it comes to when it comes to that, you have to be careful how how you phone it. If you do it and don't want and barely anyone notices because there's things worse, then yeah, fair enough. But if you just but if it's to the point where everyone's noticed that, yeah, this guy's not even trying, that could backfire. My, oh, here's a thing well, okay, 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 okay. My point isn't that he phoned it in. My point is that he was trying, but regardless of what roles he had, he was probably just a director at that too. I don't yeah. think he was able to save it, even if he tried as hard as like so uh, my point is that I believe he did try but whatever effort he put in doesn't show because at the end of the day, it's Twilight. I can't speak for you, this, but if I was a director and I was stuck with a Twilight movie, I don't think I would bring my A game into it because what's even the point? <laughs> um... I, I don't know. It, it, it depends. Again, oh. yeah, luckily for Bill Con, in that case, there was stuff worse than 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 the sets looking like they came from a TV show. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Yeah. I'll just say this: unless they allowed him to drastically change the story of Twilight, nothing he could do was going to salvage yeah. that. Yeah, like... that's not going to happen. Here's the thing: you're not forgetting this. Bill Condon on those movies was a director on well, high. I did, I did, I did just say, you know. Okay, sorry. Things... Yeah, I did just say, you know. Luckily for him. There are, there, there, there are things worse in that movie than the sets looking like they came from like a mid-budget TV show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, but that's, that's exactly the thing. That's like I said, Bill Condon on those movies was a director on hire. He was just direct. He was just hired because they needed somebody to direct. Not so much because it was a project that came from him. He was just hired because he needed money. Like he's a director, he needs to direct movies to get paid and you know make a living. You know. Oh, no, I never, I never said, I never said he wasn't. Sure, sure, sure. All right. Uh, to continue my yeah, that's basically it, really. Like it's it's fine for what it is. Again, if you're if you're, I mean, obviously you can still make that argument that it's unnecessary, and yeah, it kind of is. Um, but it, uh, I'll admit, I'll admit, if unnecessary was stuff like this, I'd be more okay with getting quote unquote unnecessary things. Like it did give us some new good stuff to the world, and I appreciate it for that. Mm-hmm. No, like, uh, it's, t okay, when I say necessary job, it's like, a, uh, like, when people pitch this, the immediate reaction should have been, this is a necessary, the original film holds up pretty well, but there, there's no need to remake it. That's what people usually mean when they say unnecessary. Well, oh, well overall, yeah, there were those things that, uh, that, that the sub did better than the original. Sure. Well, yeah, but yeah. at the time, at the time, we couldn't know that that's a thing. Well, the point is, yeah, the movie's fine, for what it is, to be honest with you. Uh, definitely better than what would come later, <laughs> but that's a topic. But that's a topic for another day. Were there, were there other Disney remakes in 2017, or was this the only one? Uh, were there? If I recall correctly, no. That's the thing. 2019 was a weird anomaly where they suddenly started shoving Disney remake after Disney remake down our throats. Because in 2019, there was no less than. Four coming out that year. Yeah, 20, in twenty eighteen they took a break, and in twenty nineteen it was a barrage of bad remakes, basically. Yeah, this yeah this was this was the only one in uh in um in twenty seventeen. Not only bad remakes, Pedro, but a sequel to one of the bad remakes as well. Brilliant. Anyway, everybody, so that was Beauty and the Beast. Uh, I enjoyed so... it. Hey, Jova. I don't yeah. know about you, but I'm, but I don't know. I feel I'm feeling a bit nostalgic for re a repeat of a previous commentary. Do you have something in mind? Something nostalgic. Well, maybe something that's based on a nostalgic factor or something. Maybe something based hmm. off of a book. That's the thing. It's not based on a book, but it is called a book. A book of something. Yes. <laughs> the book of Job. Right, but... The book of Genesis. Hmm. Let me ask you something, Jova. Book of Billy. If, let me ask you something, Jova. If your child told you to kill someone, what what would be your response? No. <laughs> <laughs> you're not to say that, but no. Well, believe it or not, Jova, 
that's the topic that we're going to explore with the next movie, A Book of Henry. <laughs> oh! Yay! <laughs> the, what are the yeah, movies? Bring the alcohol, everyone. See ya. See ya. See ya.